Um, today's class is going to be called The Gift to Strip the Heart. A Gift to Strip the Heart. Because that's what people are so hung up on at Christmas is gifts and presents. So it's a gift to strip the heart. I'm going to open up Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 7. Just going to just jump into it. I guess I shouldn't have said the day of Satan, right? No, you should have. Huh? That was oh, okay. the worst. I'm hurting people's feelings all day. Messing up their, their Christmas presents and light bulbs don't work on a tree no more. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 7. He's reading. Yes, sir. I'll be reading. All right. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Read again. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. So oppression makes a wise man mad. I mean, you acknowledge that you are in captivity. Our people as a nation are going through afflictions, tribulations, and trials. And so as a man of wisdom, you're going to get angry. It's going to bother you. It's only natural if you are a wise man to be angered by the atrocities and the evils that beset our people each day and continue to happen each day, past, present, and future. So oppression make it the wise man mad. But read on. And a gift destroyeth the heart. So one of the things that sidetracks the Negro and Hispanic is a gift. Is a gift. A lot of Negroes will complain about, about oppression, about the white man gunning us down the streets and getting acquittal after acquittal after acquittal. And as soon as the hot so called holidays or folly days or hella days show up, they forget all of that. Let bygones be bygones and they right back to Negro land again, buying Christmas gifts, buying Thanksgiving gifts, and buying Halloween costumes. Dumbed down all over again, rocked to sleep. That's what happens. A gift destroyeth the heart. In this particular case, a Christmas gift destroys the heart. Let's get Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 20, verse 29. The book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 29. Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. Read it again. Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. Go ahead. And stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. And stop his mouth that he cannot reprove. What does that mean? And stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. What does that mean? Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise and stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. What does that mean? Who has an idea what that means? Mm, brother to the far left. Right in the front. Yeah. Hey, Shalom, Deacon. Shalom. So verse 29, it says, presence and gifts blind the eyes of the wise uh -huh. and stop his mouth that he cannot reprove. Mm -hmm. um, when the wise person sees that oppression, they're not going to say anything because they're getting certain gifts that if they say it, it could be taken away from them. Right. Very good. Right. That's exactly what it means. Read again. Sirach chapter 29, verse, tw Sirach chapter 20, verse 29. Uh-huh. Presence and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. I mean, those who know better, like bribe, brothers mentioned earlier about bribery. You have men among our people who are leaders, and they would accept bribes. They would get gifts and presents and so forth, and so they weren't able to correct anybody because they were being bribed. Our people are, as a nation, are bribed every year, bombarded with Valentine's Day, bribed with Valentine's, bri bribed with Thanksgiving, bribed with Christmas, bribed with New Year's. There's a bribe of New Year's. We are constantly, constantly bribed over and over again. And we forget oppression. Some of us even know Christmas is, Christmas is bad, and they still do it anyway. You ask the so-called black Hispanic man, what does a tree have to do with the birth of Christ? And they have no clue. No clue whatsoever what that has to do with Christ. Well, I, I just do it for the gifts. Yeah, blind the eyes to the wise. Because you, you, you turn the blind eyes to the obvious. Right. That means it turned a blind eye to the obvious. You know it's wrong. You know it makes no sense, but you do it anyway for the sake of the presents and the gifts. Read again. Presents and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. Go ahead. And stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. And stop up his mouth that he can't say nothing. Because if he's getting the gifts, he can't say it's wrong because he's, he's taking part in it. If I'm saying, yo, man, that's sacred, that holiday is evil as hell, man. Like, Negro, shut up, man. You got a flat screen TV in the room. I mean, be quiet. 
You can't say nothing. You're like, oh, yeah, that's true. I did get a flat screen TV. I yeah. look stupid. So you can't say nothing because you can got bribed once again. That's what it's saying. You mad about Christmas. You got the brand new Jordans, the phone, whatever, new Jordans, whatever, for a gift. Or that Christmas dinner, you, you sat at the table, ate the dinner. Mm-hmm. Now you say, this is wicked as hell. This food is good, though. But it's wicked. Right. It's good. It looks, you sound ridiculous that you can't say a word. Get Exodus 23, verse 8. Where's he getting this from? Exodus 23 and verse 8. Now, the other day I done a class uh, for a year or so back, which was, to me was groundbreaking about the origin of Christmas. I got like over 100,000 views by now on YouTube, like thousands of views. I think it's a problem. That, that class was heavy, 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 heavy. So the history. the history behind Christmas. Yeah, that, yeah, that thing, yeah. Yeah, so, that thing is bad. Man. Yep. That still gets views till now. So I can I, I love that video. Very, very good history in that. That video steps on toes, you know. It that. does. That's why I got thousands of hundreds of thousands of views. Because again, those those gifts and presents yep. blind the eyes of those who watch the video. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's right, but yeah. mm-hmm. I like the gifts. I, I like the gifts. <laughs> Can't say nothing. Verse eight. The book of Exodus, chapter twenty three, verse eight. And thou shalt take no gift. For the gift blinded the wise. There you go. That's, where he, that's where I got it from. That's where he got it from. He's quoting the law. Read again. And thou shalt take no gift. Uh-huh. For the gift blinded the wise mm-hmm. and perverted the words of the righteous. It perverts the words. Because you get bribed. You get bought off. You can't say nothing. That's what happens. You get, you get the gift. You can't really say anything now. Because you done took the gift. You done took the present. The bribery. Because that's what it is. These holidays are bribery. To keep you in sin. That's what it's for. That's why I started off saying oppression makes a wise man mad. Because while you're oppressed and you're receiving gifts and presents, oppression don't seem so bad. Eh, we're getting gunned down, but I got a flat screen, so, uh, you know, it is what it is, man. I got a 60-inch, you know. I can touch the screen and make the water ripple on the screen. You know, these technology is alluring. Oh, wow, look. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. I was at BJ's with my mother because she needed a ride to go there. We go to each job the BJ's because they have big, they have like an electronics area. Yeah. With all the Tino's, you know, the Costco's, one of them. Yeah. But all the TVs. So we go in there, we walk by a TV, and we stop. Because it was like, the, you saw a commercial. They, the lady had water. She threw the water at the screen <laughs> real slow. And the water, is like, you see the water crystals? And I was like, wow. <laughs> I forgot why I was there. I forgot why I was even in the store. I forgot. Me, me and her together, we was like, what the hell looking at me? We're like, <laughs> Like a deer in headlights, he was like, wow, look at the water crystals. Wow. It was a, we call it a smart TV. You it makes done. you stupid. That's what it's a TV. <laughs> <laughs> I want, that thing had me, I, was, I forgot why I was in the store. I said, why are we here? Yeah, Let's yeah. just buy the TV and leave. Because that thing is dangerous, man. And, and, and the price goes down for that kind of thing during the Christmas season. The, cur- the, cur- the curved TVs. The curved, the curved, curved TV even got curved TVs. Damn, to, wrap, to wrap your, to wrap around your head. Yeah. To, 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 to <laughs> blind, evaporate. You blind you. Cover your face. <laughs> to evaporate, evaporate your brain. <laughs> if you can't say that. Once you buy, once Christmas time comes, you get that for a gift. You're not saying nothing but the Bible. The Bible? What? Mm, let me close that book. Yeah. That's what happens. Get Proverbs three and thirty one. That was uh, Exodus twenty three and eight. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 31. Uh Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Read it again. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Christmas is a holiday established by the oppressor. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. The oppressor that goes all the way back to Babylon. That's the original father of, or or the, the originator of the custom of so-called Christmas. That's where it derives from. I've seen heathens attempt Christianity cult leaders attempt to say that Jeremiah 10 is not talking about Christmas. I don't know what it's talking about then. What else could it possibly be? Is a tree being decorated with silver and gold. What else could it possibly be? Oh, uh, you guys are are, um, misinterpreting that scripture. That's your exegesis. You know, these fancy words they use now. That's your interpolation. You're adding words and, and your exegesis of the scripture. 
Okay, well, what the hell does it mean then? You did a tree, you cut it down, you set it up, you put, get, you, you put gold on it. What is that? What is that today? Is it not Christmas? But to try to, you know, that's a Jedi mind trick. Mm-hmm. It's not Christmas, Negro. It's not Christmas. It's not pagan. It's not pagan. Here's a gift. Thank you. I'll take the gift. That's how a white man does us. He figures if he says it, it's not what it is. And the Negro, the, the, the Negro, he, he goes with it. Because they, they're so prideful. They're so prideful to have so much. They have such power. Understand how much power the white man has. He has such power. He can tell you the sky is green. And he goes, goes you know what? It is kind of green. When you look at it sideways like that, turn your neck a certain way, it looks kind of green. That's how much power he has. He has that kind of, he, he, that's why when the Negro says, no, it's blue, they get mad. Oh, that's your exegesis. That's your interpretation. It's greenish. They want to be in agreement with him no matter what. No matter what it is. So, when you, so I, again, when he says something, to him, it's law. And to you, he understands, for you, it's supposed to be law because he said it. Jeremiah 10 is Christmas. I'm just, it's straight up. Undeniably, irrefutably, Christmas celebration. That goes back to Assyria and Babylon. Remember last week, I showed y'all last week, they were hanging heads. They, they would pile up heads. They would take those heads and hang them on palm trees. Mm-hmm. That's where you get the ornaments from. That's not ornaments. That's a representation of skulls on the tree. Mm. That's what it is. The tinsel, the golden, they call it tinsel, right? Mm-hmm. The golden silver tinsel, they actually took gold, real gold, and wrapped it around the tree. That's where it comes from. It's a pagan practice. Read again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. And it says, choose none of his ways, his traditions, his customs. Choose none of his ways. And we choose it because it's, because it's been implanted in us from slavery. Consciously, subconsciously, we do it. We, don't, we, we worship him in one form or another. We worship this man. To the point where he'll say, he'll, he'll, he'll make, certain, certain shows we'll have on television, He'll, he'll show it's pagan. I think it was a cartoon show, the Futurama. Where they, they go back, they go, they travel back in time, back and forth. And they show a scene, and the scene, it, it shows a palm tree with lights around it. It's all oh, Christmas. And I'm like, look at this nonsense. They'll put it in your face. But the Negro is so blind and so dumbed down, he's like, uh, oh, this is, it's, 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 it's a cartoon, it's funny. But he saw throw out hints and things out there to see, let's see who understands what we're talking about. That's what they do, just to do a, a threat assessment. Okay, let's see how much these Negroes know. Now they're still dumb. We're good. They're still dumb. We can still rule. And choose none of his ways. Get Ezekiel 20. But we didn't listen. We chose his ways anyway. And the Lord said not to choose the, their ways. Now, one of the main excuses you hear that revolve around most popular holidays who do they use to allure the people into celebrating it? Who? Huh? Thank you. See, I'm I on point tonight. The kids. The kids, the children, the children. The children, the chillins. Got to pick the, the children. We have to use the children to allure them in. Because if the kids are sad, the parents are sad. And the parents aren't going to want that. They're going to give them kids them gifts. The Ezekiel 20, I'm going to show you how far how the children have always been related to pagan holidays. Ezekiel 20, verse 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 1. Now, during Ezekiel's time, Ezekiel was taken into captivity. The Lord was showing Ezekiel things that were going on while he was in Babylon. And, oh, I'm sorry, showing him things that were going on in Jerusalem while he was in Babylon and showing him things that were going on with our people while they were in Babylon, in Jerusalem and both in Babylon, because the temple wasn't destroyed yet. It was destroyed later on. All right, read that. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Uh huh. Then came the word. Then came the word of the Lord saying unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord. I will not be inquired of by you. I'm not talking to you. You want to talk to me now? All this evil you done done? Now you want to talk to me? I'm not trying to deal with you. Read on. 
Will thou judge them, son of man? Will thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. Yeah. And say unto them, thus saith the Lord God. In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I, lift, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. Yeah. In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey. Rich which, land, rich, go ahead. Which is the glory of all lands. That's a banger. Jerusalem, Israel is the, is the glory of all lands. That's why they fight over it. That's why I call it the holy land. It is the glory of all lands. Go ahead, the, being the best. The most high's favorite land, that's Jerusalem, the glory of all lands. Go ahead. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. Don't follow the Egyptians, or the Egyptians had weird and pagan customs. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me. Didn't listen. And would not hearken unto me. They did, they did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen. My name, go ahead. Among whom they were. Among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Read that again. Write that verse. Read it again. But I wrought for my father's, for my name's sake. I mean, he said, I work, means I worked with you. I try to deal with you being rebellious and evil because the nations are watching us. They saw the wonders of us coming through that Red Sea. Understand, you're, you're seeing people, the water split in half, and you're seeing people walk through this water. So automatically, your reputation precedes you at this point. You come into this land through a wonderful way, through an amazing way. People witness it. Then you start acting like the nations. He's like, yo, you guys are making me look bad. You're making my name look bad. You're making me look bad. Bad. Not his actual namesake, but his reputation. You're making me look bad. Based upon your conduct, you're making me look stupid. I did the, those great ones. I destroyed Egypt for you. I parted the sea for you. I, I flooded the, um, the um, Pharaoh's army for you. And look what you're doing. You're acting like the very nations I took you away from. I took you away from. Read on. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen uh -huh. among whom, ye, whom they were. Because I like this verse because this verse shows that the name is of importance based upon your actions, the, name, the reputation. The, your name, only this name only has relevance based upon our conduct. Not you saying it a dozen times in every video. That's not power behind that. What gives the most size name or, or reputation power is when his people do right by him and, and, and perform his commandments. That makes his name powerful. That makes his name good. You understand? Not just throwing it around, Yahweh, yeah, or Lord, or whatever, or Yahweh, or whatever. That's not, that doesn't give any power, throwing it around while you're being wicked as hell. There's no power behind that. What you do gives it its power. You understand what I'm saying? Read on. In whose sight I made myself known unto them, in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. That's why he didn't give us his real name. He gave us titles. He said, listen, call me dad. That's who you just call me dad. Father, Yah. That's my title for you, because you, my name, you'll, you'll destroy yourselves. Just use that for now, until you're ready. Because right now, you're, there's still kids in here. We're not ready for that right now. Read on. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out, out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And I gave them my statutes, and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Right. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. So the Sabbath was established to um, acknowledge that he made a covenant between us and him. Now, remember, the Sabbath was, was made long before Israel even existed. So it's letting you know that he, the Lord established the Sabbath day because later on he was going to create his people, which is heavy. Go ahead. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. As we usually do. Go ahead. They walked not in my statutes, uh -huh. and they despised my judgments. Uh -huh, his name, same thing, go ahead. Which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And if you don't, you die instead, go ahead. And my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. 
Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake. Try with y'all again, again and again. Go ahead. That it should that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Yet. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I, which I given to them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. He says the most I says things once and twice, so you can't say he didn't say it. He'll say it two times. You don't, Jake, don't listen. I, I, I dealt with you, you messed my name up. I dealt with you, you messed my name up. I gave you the most glorious land above all lands, and you messed that up. Go ahead. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbath, for their heart went after their idols. Uh-huh, what they want to do. Go ahead. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. Uh-huh. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your father, Neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. Uh-huh. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. Uh-huh. And hollow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Uh-huh. Notwithstanding, the children of Israel rebelled against me. Go again. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them forth. Mm-hmm. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen uh-huh. and disperse them through the countries. That's what he did. He, just, like he calls what is called the diaspora. That's what he calls. I call you to be scattered all over the place. Go ahead. The dispersion. Go ahead. That's verse 23. Go ahead. Because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes went after their father's idols. Uh-huh. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were not good. You mean punishments, judgments. Go ahead. And judgments whereby they should not live. They should die. Go ahead. And I polluted them in their own gifts. And their own what? In their own gifts. And I polluted them or punished them in their own gifts. Watch this. In that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, that I might, that I might make them desolate to the mm-hmm. end that they might know that I am the Lord. So when Israel gave gifts, their gift was their kids. And they would take their kids, as soon as they were born, and they would throw them in the fire to worship Baal or Tammuz. Or asterisk, because these guys acquired blood sacrifice, primarily of children, because it was a pagan practice that Tammuz was a child who died during birth. As soon as he was born, he died young. And there was a woman's job to mourn for him, to mourn for Tammuz. So they had to express their mourning for him, by, except by also receiving a loss of a child of the, their, their own. So they had to basically take their child and kill their child so they can mourn the way Tammuz's mom mourned for him. They mourn for their children as well. That was the common practice of paganism at that time, to, loot, to, to sacrifice your child. So likewise, when Israel celebrates these customs, we, take, we make that sacrifice for our kids. That is the whole purpose. That's what we do. You understand? And during the Christmas holiday that they have on this side, we were the gifts right. in slavery. Okay. I'm just throwing that in there. I know it's a different, totally, a totally different time period, but that thing what you're talking about with Tammuz, right? That's in here too, in yeah. Ezekiel eight. Yeah, you go eight and fourteen. We can get that. Yeah, Ezekiel eight and fourteen. Get that real quick, because Ezekiel once again, Ezekiel was taken into captivity during the time of. Hold on, let me get his name. Of King jo- Joachim, 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 Kin was the son of Joachim. That's hard to, Kim and Kin. Kim was the father. Kin is the son. So Daniel was taken during the time of his father, during the time of Joachim. He went to captivity first. Then then Ezekiel went afterwards. Then you had Zedekiah. That's when he went and destroyed the temple during Zedekiah's time. That was, um, um, that was Zedekiah's brother. No, Zedekiah's, that was Joachim's brother was set up in his stead. And that's when the temple was destroyed. um, Babylonian king. 
Nebuchadnezzar took his, killed his kids first, killed his kids in front of him, then took his eyes out and took them to Babylon. Then burned our homes down and burned the temple down to the ground with the Edomites' assistance. Um, when I tell you to go? The book of Ezekiel, eight chapter, chapter 8 and verse 14. Yeah. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house. Uh-huh. So which, this, is, oh, this is a vision because Ezekiel is in Babylon. So this is going on in Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem was not destroyed as of yet. Okay? So during this time, Ezekiel is being shown a vision of what Israel was doing who were not taken captive yet because they, they took us in waves. I brought this out last week. They took us in waves. They didn't just take a whole, all of us at one time. They would take a number here, the number there, like here and there. They would take us in waves. So whoever was not taken at this time, the story resided in Jerusalem. They were doing what? Read it again. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house. In the vision. Go ahead. Which was toward the north. Uh-huh. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. There sat women weeping for Tammuz. The custom or ritual was to weep for Tammuz the way his mother did when he died as a child. And he's also a pagan messiah who was born on what day? December 25th. Miraculously. That's Tammuz's birth. You understand? And we would mourn for him, the child, the child God. We mourn for him. All right? Go back to Ezekiel Some 20. of y'all didn't know that, didn't you? <laughs> we were at Ezekiel 20 and verse. 20 verse 26. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 26. And I polluted them in their own gifts, mm -hmm. in that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, that I, may, that I might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Go ahead. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, yet in, your fa yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, mm -hmm. in that they have committed a trespass against uh -huh. me. For when I had brought them into the land, for which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, then, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees. And they offered their, their sacrifices, and they presented the provocation of their offering. Uh -huh. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. Go ahead. Then I said unto them, What is the high place where, where unto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama, Bama unto this day. Go ahead. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? Yes, go ahead. And commit ye whoredom after their abominations? Mm -hmm, we do. For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire. You make your sons to pass through the fire. Go ahead. Ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day, and shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. So we made our sons pass through the fire. Now, what we do today is we, is called abortions. Now, you oftentimes, it's called Planned Parenthood, you oftentimes hear the argument of, well, abortions are good or Planned Parenthood is good because you have, in, you have situations of incest and you have situations of rape. That's what the Edomite women produce. They present that as an argument. However, here's what they leave out. Less than 4% of that is, is in, consists of incest and rape. The 90th percentile of that is convenience or inconvenience. 96% is, is based upon convenience or inconvenience, meaning I'm not ready right now. Yeah, he laid with me. Yeah, I, he, he's, I'm pregnant, but I'm still young. I want to have fun. Convenience or inconvenience. I have a job. I'm independent. I make a little amount of money. I'm, a, I'm not ready for that right now. Convenience or inconvenience. That is the same thing as sacrifice. It's the same exact thing for their idols. Their idol is themselves. Their idol is their job. Their idol is their lust. That is the same exact thing. Esau's gift to them is, I'll take your child and, you, and rip it out of you, and then I'll take the organs and gather those together and sell those on the, on the highest market. They do that. They don't just throw babies away. I hope you don't think that that's what goes on. They take them black organs. Them black organs is blessed. Israel, we are, we are people, if you don't understand, we are far beyond even genetically special. To the point where Esau takes our hearts, our limbs, lungs, whatever he can gather, and he puts them in all kinds of farms and so forth. And uh, Esau goes and they bid. Uh, I take the I take the heart and they do it. Yeah, they sound like a sound like a movie, sci-fi. It's not. They do this. 
children go missing all the time. Some children are found with no organs at all. One child, they say he, he killed himself. Open him up full of paper. So he killed himself. He slit his throat, cut himself open, took his organs out, sold himself back up, and then he hung, then he hung himself. This is what he used to tell you. Negroes was like, yeah, he did. He killed himself, took his organs out, threw him out. And hung. This is Jay Think like this. They have found children without organs. 32. Verse 32. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that ye say. We will be as the heathen. This is why we celebrate these customs. Go ahead. We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. To serve wood and stone. Because we will, uh, we will either worship stones, like as in Islam, or wood as in the wooden cross, or tree stumps. Trees, period, trees. Stocks, whatever they call them, stocks, stocks. Right. That's what we would do. We would sacrifice on top of that, on top of that stock or decorate it. Jeremiah 10. Start to verse 32. Jeremiah 10 and verse 1. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Yeah, read again. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Which goes back to Proverbs where it says, um, the oppressor, choose none of his ways. Saying the same exact thing. Go ahead. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So the heathen will be amazed at a, at a shooting star. Wow. That's a God falling over there. No, it's a shooting star, dummy. But the heathens are simple. Uh, eclipse, oh, wow, eclipse, shooting star, the sun rising, the sun going down, the water flowing through the rocks. They were, well, not water, that's the heavens, but the heavens, stars, shooting stars, or the sun shining, or the moon, um, lunar, um, the half a moon, they would worship all kind of nonsense. So they were simple. We would follow right behind them. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Don't be afraid of the signs of heaven. It's, those are natural occurrences. Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. So the heathen are afraid of those things. Go ahead and make a big deal of it. Go ahead. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the laws or ordinances of the people are vain, of no value or lies. That's what it means. Go ahead. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. One goes and there's a custom. They go into the tree and cut it out of the forest. Go ahead. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They cut it down with the axe. Go ahead. They deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate it with silver and gold. They take the tree out of the forest and they decorate it with silver and gold. What, where's the misinterpretation? Where is the misinterpretation? It's clearly obvious what it is. Why is, why is it? You said where is the misinterpretation? How many of y'all heard of this uh, term called cognitive dissonance? Dissonance. Can somebody explain what that means? You go, you, you you can explain it, Ezekiel, because I don't like <laughs> nobody else seem to know. Uh, cognitive dissonance. That's um, willful ignorance. Okay, that's wanna, another. That's an easy wanna, way of saying. I don't want to. I don't want to know about it. Even though you're trying to tell me about it, I don't want to know, so right. I can be blameless. Put just just a second. Yeah. Put it up there. The term. Can y'all see it? The t thank you. The term cognitive dissonance is used to describe the feeling of discomfort. That's the dissonance there. The feeling of discomfort, the, the feeling of discomfort that results from holding two conflicting beliefs. You're taught Christmas. You're given a gift. And the things that you're given, you hold that because you want to hang on to that. The, 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 the discomfort comes in is when you know that what you're upholding is bad for you. Mm -hmm. Where we at? You took the highlight off. When there, is an when there is an inconsistency between beliefs and behavior. In other words, when there's an inconsistency between what the gift represents and the truth, which is what the cognitive, is the cognitive part is. So in other words, let me use it the easy way. Cigarettes are bad for you, correct? Yep, that's, right. that's a perfect, a perfect way of explaining it. Yep. Cigarettes, you, you're cognizant that cigarettes will kill you. But you justify it by saying everybody dies. Mm -hmm. or, or I got to die someday. Yeah, yeah. So the, 
but it still doesn't get rid of the fact that you know that cigarettes cause cancer. The Surgeon General determined big, huge ad, one third of the page, cigarettes smoking will kill you. It takes a certain amount of dissonance to remove that knowledge, that cognitive, so that you can justify Christmas, so you can justify smoking. You follow me? So that's what it says here. What's the rest of it? Uh, something, what is it? It says something must change in order to eliminate the discomfort. That's what it, or reduce the dissonance. What changes? You push it out of your mind. You push the truth out of your mind. You push, right, you reduce what Jeremiah 10, so you can understand. You, you reduce what we're reading and justify Christmas because both of those things are conflicting. The reducing is the, the excuse you made behind Exactly. It. That's the point. The, the changes give it all together. Exactly. The reduce is still do it, but find the excuse to keep doing it. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. Jonah, you were going to say something. I know you're into these kinds of things, so just real quick and I'm going to be quiet. Come, come. A big excuse that people say is I'm here for a good time, not a long time. That's a big excuse, yeah. Here for a good time, not for a long time. Wow. So y'all got it, right? Jeremiah 10, verse I guess they didn't get it. Some of y'all didn't get the point about cognitive dissonance. It's willful ignorance. You can, right, willful ignorance. That's an easy way to understand. So basically, another way of saying it is hear no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, see no evil. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. But you know the evil is there. Right. Just pretend That's the point. There. You're pretending that it's not there. If I close my eyes, it'll go away. Open your eyes. Oh, it's still there. Oh. Nope. Ignorance is bliss. It ain't bliss. That's kind of dissonance. Go ahead. The verse book of four. Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 4. Mm -hmm. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. That it can't move. That's, that's called the tree stand. Go ahead. You take it, you put it in that pot, and you put the screws, you, you turn the screws until it stays tight and it doesn't move. Go ahead. They are upright as the palm tree. Now they are upright because they use the palm tree. Now we use the palm, we use the pine tree, which is still upright. It's an upright tree as well. Go ahead. But speak not. Because the ritual, the custom or custom was that if you did not put gifts or offer gifts to the tree, the god, which would be Nimrod really, or Baal, would enter the tree and would attack you. So you had to offer gifts to the tree to, uh, to appease the god. Within or was recognized to be within that tree, so he's saying here, you gotta take it, you gotta cut it down with an axe, fasten it so it doesn't move, and then deck it with silver and gold. They uprise the palm tree. They don't speak. The custom of the Babylonians was that they do speak, but they don't speak. Go ahead. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Uh huh. They must needs be born. Born b o r n e means carried. They must needs be carried. Go ahead. Because they cannot go. They cannot walk. They cannot chase you. But the ritual, the custom was, if you don't put a gift under the tree, the, the monster will get you. It's, it's somewhat like uh, Nimrod, spirit of Nimrod, they right. said the spirit of Nimrod would come in the tree, and the tree would attack you. Right. That's, that's, how, that's, what, that's what this was coming from. And what sound like that is he knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows when you're and they good use or that bad, today. so be good for goodness sake. It's the same thing there. It's the same exact custom, the same exact thing. Go ahead. You don't do it. You get a cold in your sock. <laughs> you're in a bad. You're on a bad Santa's list. Santa's bad list. That's what that is. The kids all scared. I'm gonna be good this year. I want gifts. You got adults. I'll be good this year. I want gifts. <laughs> Grown men and women doing that nonsense. Go ahead. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. They cannot hurt you. Go ahead. Neither also is it in them to do good. They can't do anything. They're trees. In other words. They just stand there. In other words, Jeremiah was saying, look, there's no spirit in this tree. Right. What the hell are you afraid of it for? There's no, cause the, the, like you said, the word was that the spirit of Nimrod would come in the tree and the tree would attack them if they didn't bring silver and gold to the palace. Right. For Semiramis. Because Nimrod had died. Right. And the kingdom was going broke. <laughs> Psalms 106 and verse 35. Understand that this is a, a practice that was going on in Assyria. Babylon, I went over this last week. Assyria took over. Then Babylon took over where Assyria left off. Kingdom wasn't really going broke, but yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Deacon. But the point is, is that Assyria had this practice among themselves. And the Babylonians took over where Assyria left off. 
then the Greeks did the same thing and whitewashed their Babylonian and Assyrian gods, made them white like them. No, the Persians took over where the Babylonians left off, and the Greeks took the Persian and Babylonian and Egyptian gods and made them look like them, made them Greek pantheons or whitewashed black gods. That's what they really are. Then the Romans took the Greek gods and gave them Latin names and worshipped the exact same ones. So the same practice followed each captivity up until now. It hasn't changed. Go ahead. Psalms 106, verse uh, 35. The book of Psalms, chapter 106, verse 35. But we're mingled among the heathen. We mingled ourselves among the heathen. Go ahead. And learned their works. We learned their ways. So after the Lord said to us through Solomon, choose none of their ways. Go ahead. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. And we served the idols, which became a trap unto us. And we got caught up in the joy and the fun and the gifts and presents. It's a snare unto us. Because we know it's wrong. You know it makes no damn sense to do it, but we do it anyway because we're trapped in that. We're trapped in the lust of greed, covetousness. That's what it is. Go ahead. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. Read again. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. We sacrifice our sons and our daughters unto idols, devils. Because these, these idols are devils because, because behind them comes a deceitful doctrine. A deceitful custom. Go ahead. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. That's exactly what happened. Hold on. Um, is that all I want? We, we don't, we don't. Verse 42. Thus were they defiled with their own works. We defiled our own works, our own actions. Go ahead. And went a whoring with their own inventions. And start making things up, making up our own excuses. Go ahead. That's the cognitive dissonance, the excuse. Go ahead. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. He started to hate us. Go ahead. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen. Uh-huh. And, they, and they that hated them ruled over them. And those that hated us ruled over us. Go ahead and begin to oppress us. Go ahead. Their enemies also oppressed them. There you go. Who hate us. Go ahead. And they were brought into subjection under their hand. And we are so even to this day, until this day, under those who hate us for the very same reason. Let's get Baruch chapter 6, verse 4. Now, Baruch was Jeremiah's scribe. Let's see what he wrote. What Jeremiah said to Baruch. Baruch 6 and 5? Hold on. I want 6, verse 4. <clears throat> the book of Baruch, chapter 6 and verse 4. Now shall ye see in Babylon gods of silver and of gold and of wood, borne upon shoulders. Read again. Now shall ye see in Babylon. You shall see in Babylon what? Gods of silver. Gods of silver. And of gold. Uh-huh. And of wood. Trees. Born upon shoulders. Carried on the shoulders, like in Jeremiah 10. Go ahead. Which caused the nations to fear. Which are afraid the nations, the nations are afraid of them. Go ahead. Beware, therefore, that ye in no wise be like to strangers. Don't be like the other nations. Do not be like them. Go ahead. Neither be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. When ye see the multitude before them and behind them, worshiping because them. Because you see everybody else doing it, you want to follow the crowd. Jeremiah is saying, dude, Baruch, do not do that. You see thousands of people all day. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thousands of people all day. The whole, I can't stand working on Christmas Eve. I can hear that all day. Happy holidays. I'm like, yeah, all right. That's how I respond. All right. All right. No doubt. No doubt. That's how I respond. You know, Jake goes, that's how I respond. I don't even say it back. I say, all right, all right no problem. Yeah, yeah, all right. Hey, I have some that I it's just ignored them. I just didn't say anything. You know what that the demon did? Came all the way up. Listen, I said, happy holidays. <laughs> Turn up, demon. That's why I got to respond. They'll, they'll do that. Jake is, Jake is adamant, man, about that nonsense. I said, Merry Christmas. can't ignore the demons, man. They will find you. Look for me, man. They'll look for you. That's why I just respond like that. Like, happy holidays. Yep. Yep. That's how I respond. 
39? Oh, I'll say enjoy. Well, if the heathen, I'll go enjoy your holiday. That's what I say. Oh, yeah, enjoy your holiday. No, I'm taking Emphasize you to the office. The your. I'm taking you to the office. Your holiday. <laughs> but it ain't mine. 39. They're going to they tell the man on you now. No, nah, they don't catch on. You got to be sick with it. You got to talk how they talk. You, you ain't got the now. sophisticated demons. They, they look for it, brother. They look for it. about mine? Man. Yeah. This no, is, no, I, no. I, no. They, I said Merry Christmas. <laughs> 39. The book of Baruch, chapter 6, verse 39. They're gods of wood and which are overlaid with gold and silver. Read it again. They're gods of wood. They're gods of wood. And which are overlaid with gold and silver. Which are covered or decorated with gold and silver. Same thing. Because the tree is the god. Go ahead. Or the are, stock is the god. Go ahead. Are like the stones that be hewn out of the mountain. They, they that worship them shall be confounded. Confused. Go ahead. How should a man then think and say that they are gods? When even the Chaldeans the themselves. Babylonians. Go ahead. Even when the when the even the Chalde, Chaldeans themselves dishonor them, don't take them seriously. Even the Edomites, you have Edomites who go, listen, that's pagan. I don't celebrate that. I see Edomites on TV go, listen, it's pagan. You shouldn't celebrate that. But Jake, do it anyway. <clears throat> go ahead. Who, if they shall see one dumb that cannot speak, they bring him and entreat Bell that he may speak. And entreat who? And entreat Bell that he may speak. Keep that in mind. Entreat Bell that he may speak. Bell, go ahead. As though he were able to understand. Can I understand? Because it's not alive. Go ahead. Yet they cannot understand them, this themselves and leave them, for they have no knowledge. Yeah, he don't sit there and go, hey, Belle. How you the, the, the idols are standing there. It's an idol. It's a toy. They're just sitting there. They're like, yeah, I want so-and-so. And I want this and I want that blessing. It's, it's just sitting there. And the heathen just sit there and keep talking to it like it's going to talk back to them. It's not. But this is how the heathen were. And Jake will fall right behind the heathen and do the exact same thing. Get um Deuteronomy seven twenty five. Deuteronomy seven verse twenty five. The book of Deuteronomy chapter seven verse twenty five. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Destroy their gods. Do not try to reason with it. Find a gray area. It says destroy their gods. Go ahead. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them. That's what we did. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold, or gold and silver and gold tinsel that is on them. Go ahead. Nor take it unto thee, Go ahead. lest thou be snared therein. That's what happens. Go ahead. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Next verse. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house. What's the abomination we bring into our house today? The Christmas tree. You see on every corner a whole bunch of trees wrapped in that plastic mm -hmm. in a line by hundreds and they sell out in, in one night. They sell out in a day. Gone. So in some jakes, you got that one jake that be simple as hell. He'll buy the most driest one <laughs> and put all the lights he find. He can find put all kind of lights on it. His street lights from his car, yep. headlights, flashlights hanging on the tree. Didn't, his house, his whole house is on fire. There you go. Didn't did you, did you see the didn't you see the Christmas lights on the fire trucks <laughs> coming to put the fire out? Yeah. <laughs> burn the whole house down. Burn the whole house down. He said, "You got Christmas Gibson now." Gibson all burned. House burned. Gibson burned. Him burned. Burn that's God's judgment. Yeah, that's, what that's it is. God's judgment. That's beautiful. That's God's judgment. Twenty six. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, including them gifts. Go ahead. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Lest you be a cursed thing and get destroyed along with it. Go ahead. But thou shalt utterly detest it. Your job is to despise it, hate it. Go ahead. And thou shalt utterly abhor it. For it is a cursed thing. It is a cursed thing. It's a cursed thing. You're supposed to despise these Christmas trees. Despise the, the turkey. Despise the costumes on Halloween. Despise the New Year's ball dropping. Some of y'all love that thing. I watch it. Sit there, turn TV on. It's going to drop. Five, four, three, two, one. New niggas. Yay! Man, I used to see so many in my days of, of being, being with Satan in the world. You know, I went to that madness once, yeah, that ball dropping thing, way back in 86. Oh, damn. How many? How, yeah, that's how far. <laughs> That's when it was, 86. Watched, went the ball drop. How many of y'all were born in 86? Yeah, I know, I reveal my age, so what? 
Eighty. That was the last time, though. Oh, I seen this dude get robbed. Man, that, they chased him. He said he's running with the money. Get him! Get him! Get him! <laughs> <laughs> they beat the hell out of him. For everybody. In front of everybody. They they suspended him like four of them. They each grabbed the limb, suspended them in the air. Then a little short Negro reached down and went into his pockets. Wham! Pulled a pull a wad of money out. Oh, out. Man. Then they dropped him like a boom. <laughs> and then they all took off. Wasn't a cop nowhere. <laughs> I said, these niggas out here is crazy. Huh? Yeah, that's when they had the light I think they had the light blue uniforms then. But uh, they weren't nowhere around. Damn. Go ahead, Deacon. <laughs> Brother, get Joshua 618. Robbed him blind, man. For everybody. The book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 18. And, and ye in any wise, and ye in any wise keep yourself from the accursed thing. Keep yourself from the accursed things. Go ahead. Lest ye make yourselves accursed. When you make yourselves accursed. That's what happens. Go ahead. When ye take of the accursed thing. When you take it, when you um, buy it or purchase it, bring it to your home. Go ahead. And make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Read it again. And make, and make the camp of... No, no, of, read it from the top. I'm sorry. And ye in any wise, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Uh-huh. Lest ye make yourselves a curse. Lest ye make yourselves a curse. Go ahead. When ye take of the accursed thing. And make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. What you don't understand is the most side doesn't punish the individual. He'll punish an entire nation for the act of one. That's what he does. He says, if you bring that into your home, I'm going to punish all of y'all at one time. I'm not going to just punish one guy. I'm going to punish a whole bunch of you. Mm -hmm. So y'all all, all going to be wondering, who, who, what's going on? Who, who, who bought the damn ship in here? Right. Where's Achan at? <laughs> Where's a a a Achan? Achan, he bought that Babylonish garment to his tent, and they, people started dying. He said, oh, yo, something's wrong. People are dying. Josh, Joshua said, listen, Lord, people are dying. Something is wrong. He said, check your camp. Check the tents. Mm -hmm. And he had to do a damn lineup. Listen, he said, check your tribe. Mm -hmm. check, mm -hmm. check Judah. Because among, among you was some Negro, N-word. Mm -hmm. It was me. I, I stole it. And Joshua yeah. said, listen, kill him, kill his wife, kids, and kill his animals. Mm -hmm. kill, burn him a lot. Burn everything. Burn his tent. Burn burned everything. everything. Burned everything. No remembrance of everything. It. So, listen. And the Lord the was pleased of, with that thing. Yeah, he, he didn't care. The act of one can affect many with Israel. The Most High punishes Israel as a whole, not just individual. You know, Christianity is individualized. And is Christianity punished, oh, I'm, I'm saved or I'm delivered. The Lord goes, no, 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 no. I'm going to save all of you at one time. I'm gonna kill, if I kill one, I'm going to kill a lot of y'all. That forces Israel to work together and to keep, and to keep their corners covered. That's what it does. It forces you, force you to check this. If one, if one guy's evil will affect you, you're going you're gonna to get him first. Yeah, that's the most side of it. If, if I have, if I punish others for the act of one, the others will act. I don't got to do nothing. Like, it's, like, it's like in the classroom. When the kids, you have the bad kids and good kids. The bad kids misbehave, no one go outside. Everybody mad. So next time, Yo, man, yo, shut up, man. I'm going to go outside and play today. Shut up. The kids step in for you. You ain't got to do nothing. Sit back and watch. Hey. Some of y'all know that. Some of y'all be mad and say, oh, listen, I want recess, man. I want to play. I got G.I. Joe's. <laughs> I want to play my T.I. Joe's today, man. You playing games. Don't fool the teacher. Like kids the, lose their mind. Like they did that dude on uh, Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah he, kept me, he kept messing up they and making him, everybody do PT. They beat him with a bag of soap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sit there, hold him, hold him down the bump bed and beat him with a bat. Tie behind up. He got the message after that. He was good after that. He was good <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Let's get Bell and the Dragon. Remember we read earlier in Baruch about how they speak to Bell and don't respond. Well, like I said before, the Assyrians were ruling. The Babylonians took over where they left off. Then the um, Persians came in and followed behind, followed suit. Every god, believe it or not, is borrowed. It's just different names. Every god is, is, is repetitive. There's no new god. There's no new guys. It's just the same god, different name. So if that's the case, what's the name? What's the what's the base name of the gods that they're dealing with? They didn't hear me, Deacon. Say so ask him again. Uh, 
if that one is Baal, another one is what? So the different gods that you that you were naming? Oh, yeah, Asterisk. Asterisk, all the Tamils, all those. Th- what's the what's the common denominator at the very bottom of it? Who are they celebrating? Satan. Yep. Satan. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. They're, they're looking at me. Well, why you why it gotta be Satan? If it ain't God, who is it? Right. There's only two forces on this earth. Right. Default. Is you either celebrating the most high or you're celebrating Satan. So tell your tell your mamas and your 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 cousins and all that with this Christmas message. We read out the Bible that they ain't celebrating that they ain't celebrating the most high. So they celebrating Christmas. Yes, mama, you're into Satan worship. Yes, Dad, you're into Satan worship. Just tell them that. Just tell them house. straight. Tell them that in your own house, though. Don't tell them that in their house. <laughs> you worshiping <laughs> Satan? The, the nigga, get out. Why am I stuck outside in the street? <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all simple. Y'all all right? <laughs> all right. It's uh, good the deacon said that. I have y'all in the street. <laughs> Damn y'all! So I'm under a bridge now, I'm trying to keep warm. Bell and the Dragon, verse 1. The book of Bell and the Dragon, verse 1. And King Estages was, ga- uh, was gathered to his fathers, uh-huh. and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. Uh-huh. And Daniel conversed with the king and was honored above all his friends. Yeah. Now the Babylonians had an idol called Bell. Called Bell. I remember that in um, Baruch. Mm-hmm. Bell, go ahead. And there, and there were spent every... And there were and there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour and forty sheep and six vessels of wine. That's money. Money was spent on this God. It's the same exact thing as Christmas and Halloween and New Year's. Money was spent. Go ahead. And the to king, honor this God. Go ahead. And the king worshipped it. And the king worshipped it. Go ahead. And went daily to adore it. But Daniel worshipped his own God. Daniel said, I ain't worshipping now. I have my own God to worship. Go ahead. And the king said unto him, why dost, thou, why dost not thou worship Bel? Why don't you worship ba- um, Bel? Why don't you celebrate Christmas with anybody else? Go ahead. Who answered and said, because I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living God who hath created the heaven and the earth and hath sovereignty over all flesh. I worship that God. Go ahead. Then said the king unto him, Thinkest thou not that Bel is a living God? Isn't Bel a living God too? Go ahead. Seest thou not how much he eateth and drinketh every day? He goes, see? But look, Bel eats and drinks every day. Because it, it was an idol, a dragon idol. He goes, see? Bel eats and drinks all the time. Look at the food's eating. See? Watch this. Then Daniel smiled. Stop, and s- stop, stop. <laughs> Daniel was like, this guy is stupid as hell. Now, he, now that's his boss. He ain't going to say that. But Daniel was like, oh, God. Oh, king, he's simple. Go ahead. Then Daniel smiled and said, O king, be not deceived. Don't fall for it. Go ahead. For this is but clay within and brass without, and did never eat or drink anything. This thing isn't real, king. It's made of clay inside and made of what outside? Brass outside. It didn't eat anything. It's not alive. Go ahead. So the king was wroth. He, the king got mad. He took Daniel seriously. Go ahead. For his priests and said unto no, them. No, read again. So the king was wroth and called for his priests uh-huh. and said unto them, If ye tell me not who this is that devoureth these expenses, ye shall die. So what was happening? They were robbing him. His priests was robbing him. He's, remember, he's providing food, 40000 That's think, money. He's thinking the idol is eating it. Yeah, he's thinking the idol eating it. He's like, listen, whoever, whoever spent my damn money, man, you better tell me I'm going to kill you. Who was spending my money? Who's eating about my damn food? Go ahead. But if he can certify me that Bell devoured them, then Daniel shall die. If you can prove to me that this idol's eating this food, I'll kill Daniel. Go ahead. For he had spoken blasphemy against Bell. And Daniel said unto the king, Let it be according to thy word. Whatever. Now you know, the, right. you're gonna kill me, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now the priests of Bell were three score and ten. Seventy. Besi- Go ahead. Beside their wives and children. He feeding families. The person. <laughs> The king was feeding families, man. Seventy men aside from their wives and children. Go ahead. And the king went with Daniel into the temple of Bel. They gave him a temple. Go ahead. So Bel's priest said, lo, we go out. We're going to leave now. Go ahead. But thou, O king, set on the meat 
and make ready the wine. The, so imagine this is the idol right here. This is the idol. They say, get put the food right here in front of the idol. Put the food right here. And the food and the drink right here. He's gonna eat it. Then gonna close the door behind him. Then go leave, they're gonna leave the room and close the door. Go ahead, watch. So Bell's priest said, Lo, we go out. But thou, O king, set on the meat and make ready the wine uh -huh. and shut the door fast. And close the door and lock it up. Go ahead. And seal it with thine own signet. And have no one go inside unless without, your, um, without your authority. Go ahead. And tomorrow, when thou comest in, go ahead. if thou findest not that Bell hath eaten up all, we will suffer death. Then if you see that he didn't eat this food, then kill us. Go ahead. Or else Daniel, that speaketh falsely against us. Or kill Daniel for lying on us. Go ahead. And they little regarded it. They didn't care. I said, hey, yeah. He, 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 they, um, they didn't care. They had no worries, no concerns. Go ahead. For under the table, they had made a privy entrance. Stop. 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 So they had under the, the table where the God is a secret door where they would go underground, come up, and then eat the food, go back through the door. and come. They, they was cunning. Well, watch this. Read on. Watch this. They wanted that idol to live. They wanted that idol because they were eating. Yeah. That was their bread. I was their bread and butter. Go ahead. For under the table they had made a privy entrance, whereby they entered in continually and consumed those things. He was feeding them. Go ahead. So when they were gone forth, the king set meat before Bell. Uh huh. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to Hold bring. Hold on. But how much meat? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Read verse three again. How much meat? <laughs> now the Babylonians had nope. an idol. Called Bell, and there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour, and forty sheep, and six vessels of wine. That's a lot of money. That's that's money during this time. So they would come and take it, and they say, "See, he ate them." But the things is gone. You, this bone, no bone, nothing left. They took everything. Go back now. Where was that? Verse fourteen. Uh huh. So when they were gone forth, the king set meats for Bell before Bell. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes, and those they strewed throughout all the temple in the presence of the king alone. So Daniel was slick. Daniel said, no, 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 no. Before we leave, throw some ashes first around the floor, then close the door. This me and you. So those ashes, so the king said, throw ashes on the floor. He threw ashes down on the floor. Footprints. Yeah, watch, watch. Go ahead. Then, then went they out and shut the door and sealed it with the king's signet and so departed. After the ashes were thrown on the floor. Go ahead. Now in the night came the priests with their wives and children. So there's not only did the priests come into the room to eat, they brought their wives and children through the door to eat. Yeah, he brought 4,000 sheep. Damn. Yeah, wine over there. They was dogging it. Go ahead. Now in the night came the priests with their wives and children. As they were wont to do. As they were accustomed to do. Go ahead. And did eat and drink up all. Uh-huh. In the morning betime the king arose and Daniel with him. And the king said, Daniel, are the seals whole? Uh-huh. And he said, Yea, O king, they be whole. Right. And no one opened the door. Go ahead. And as soon as he had opened the door, the king looked upon the table mm -hmm. and cried with a loud voice, Great art thou, O bell. Great art thou, O bell. Eat and be merry. Yep. Go ahead. And with thee is no deceit at all. And you ate all this food. I see in your face, Daniel. In your face. <laughs> Go ahead. Then left Daniel. Man, Daniel was like, ah. <laughs> Daniel started laughing at him. Go ahead. And held the king that he, he should. Said, he said, that step he should back. Hold on, hold on, king. Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Don't, step don't, back. Yeah. Just take a step back real quick. Go ahead. Don't get too happy. Don't get too happy. Go ahead. <laughs> then left Daniel and held the king that he should not go in and said, Behold now the pavement. Look at the floor. Go ahead. And mark well those footsteps are these. Whose footsteps are those? Go ahead. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, <laughs> women, and children. <laughs> Go ahead. That is rough. And then the king was angry. And the king up here. They realized they were calling him a fool. <laughs> they robbing me. Go ahead. And took the priests with their wives and children. Who showed them the privy they doors? You, how you get in here? How'd you get in this room? Uh, here, sir. Open the secret door. Go ahead. Where they were came in and consumed such things as were upon the table. Uh huh. Therefore, the king slew them Damn. and delivered Bell into Daniel's power, who destroyed him and his temple. That's that. 
That's all I want. That's all I want. So now, why did I read that? When we're young, we're told to leave out milk and cookies Mm -hmm. because Santa was going to come and eat the milk and the cookies. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You know you done messed it. Deacon, you know you done messed these people up because they know they did that thing. I did it. Damn. I did it. I was told. I saw it done. I did it. I see, I'm, not, see, I'm not alone. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I'm not alone. But they, they know. They know. I would get the cookies and the milk, and I would wake up in the morning. Yay! Santa ate the cookies and the milk. My mom was like, mm-hmm. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> he enjoyed it, too. Mm. Wow. So just let that, let that thought marinate on their head a little bit. Do you see the levels that we will go to honor these demonic things? Our mothers, our fathers would lie. Yeah. I'm going to get that huh? right now. They would lie. They're lying to you. I've seen that thing. I was, I was much younger. Y'all know this like eons ago. <laughs> I went over to my cousin's house in New Jersey. They lived in New Jersey. And this was, uh, yeah, yeah. Never mind the year. <laughs> and this was on so-called Christmas. Christmas Eve. My uncle, we were looking out the window. Now, we supposed, this was supposed to be the deal like Christmas, what is it? Chris, uh, Chris, this, what, what's his name? Santa Claus. He come down the chimney. He's supposed to come down your chimney and put gifts up under the tree. Y'all all right? Mm-hmm. That's what he's supposed to do. Until we looked out the window and saw our uncle taking gifts out of the trunk and sneaking in the house and doing it. That messed up Christmas for all of us. Yep. Yeah. At least for me. me. But yeah. the point is, we lie. You mean to tell me my, the uncle never told them to tell them, say, listen, there ain't no dog on white man coming down no chimney. We ain't even got a chimney. I've worked all year long to give y'all gifts, and I'm going to give the credit to the enemy. You see that? Which is crazy. Yeah. But okay. that's the lie that we would do. Right. I'll give you an example. I was younger. My grandma was in my in my um, grandmother's house. And I peeked through the door, and I see them all. I see them, everybody in the room, wrapping the gifts. I was like, <gasps> you know, a kid, you're like, <gasps> no, in my mind. You, you, you've been lied to for so long. Mm-hmm. Then you see it, you're like, <gasps> but then the gift is straight up the wise. I was like, well, it doesn't exist, but I got Nintendo. Woo! <laughs> Nintendo, Mario. <laughs> boom, boom, yeah. <laughs> all night. I didn't care. I, Gifts, I didn't care. I got over it real quick. So that, oh, what? Voltron? Oh, shit, up, Voltron. Yes. Voltron. Yes. Power Rangers. Yes. I went crazy. I love toys. But the point is that I forgot to go over it quick. Then another time. There's a generation to... gap here. Y'all all right with that, right? Yeah, they know Voltron. They still, <laughs> I don't they, know nothing about no Voltron. Nothing new is Voltron still around. Just keep revising it over and <laughs> over again. The ideas are gone. The days of ideas are gone. But um, uh, it was that time and something else. And something else happened. I forgot. But the point is that I caught on to that quick. I, it, was, it didn't take long for me to get over it. Some, people, some kids are devastated by that stuff. Some kids are hurt bad by that. Or you, you, you had parents. Oh, at one time, that's what happened. Um, my friend, he was devious. His mom got him a gift. And the, tree, the gift was under the tree. He's like, yo, man, I want to know what's in there. I want to know what's in there. I said, nah, man, you know, just wait till Eve. He was like. Hell no. I wanna know what's in that. So he went to his kitchen, got a knife, he cut it real real he did some slick stuff. He cut the, the gift in a way where she couldn't tell. He cut it, opened it, he was like, oh man, Sega Saturn, sweet. Take the back. I was like, yo, man, you, you done messed up Christmas. I was mad. You spoiled at him. it. You spoiled it. When I was in my <laughs> teens, I'm like, yo, man, you you done messed up the whole damn Christmas, man. We know what's gonna go. He's like, yeah, man, but I guarantee you'll be back and play it, right? I was like, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> But I was actually hurt by him opening the gift. That's how it's, it's That's the it's something demons. wrong with you. That's demons. And if you mess up Christmas, you got to wait a whole nother year yeah. to do it again to try to get it right. That's some real demons. That's a real demon. Here you are, the father. You work all all year long. Oh, that's, that's working overtime. Right. 
yep. all kind of stuff. And give your glory to the white man. Then you give your glory. That's you what my point. You give white man. Exactly. That was the point I was making. You give you the credit to the you're enemy. You're worshiping a white man who was born in a manger with a bunch of animals, miraculously. Right. Then tell your child that a fat white man came down a chimney, which in the hood, you don't have that at exactly. all. Projects. Exactly. I don't know. What, they go through the incinerator because they ain't going through the chimney. Exactly. They go through the incinerator and they'll get robbed. If he was real, he'll get robbed. Right. If he was a real person, he get robbed. Niggas will rob his sleigh, <laughs> rob his wheels. They would just rob him entirely and just take, take the gifts. But that was real. But believe it or not, if you lived in the projects like I did, we actually thought that he slipped through the we, chimney we, we, and I came, did, in on, came in the hallway, slipped yep. in the door. Yep. Tell must have leave the door open. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Believe that thing. He came through the terrace. What? That's not the story. He, here's in my building. Ain't no chimney there. But it gets 19 verse 11. We start lying to ourselves after a while. We start making things up. But it gets 19 verse 11. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 11. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. That's a law. Neither lie one to another or deal falsely. We tell your children that a fat white man from the North Pole gave them gifts. You must imagine you working for you making freaking working sixty hours in a week to get to save money for these gifts. You give all that all of that hard work, hard work and the money you you gain from that hard work. You give to an invisible fat white dude that doesn't exist. You take no credit for it. You take no credit for yourself. What you did. Hey, Deacon, it's even worse because sometimes, and y'all know, y'all know, the parents, when they can't control the children, you know what they say? If you don't, because they be bad all year. Ain't paying daddy no attention. Ain't paying mommy no attention. Yep. Come November, they know. If you be bad, Santa ain't going to bring you no gifts. He knows if you're bad or good and all that. Now, you then all of a sudden, your kids, quote, unquote, Start trying to respect you because they're waiting for a white man to give them some gifts. Yep. Y'all see this? Mm. That's a slave mind, man. That is 100% slave mind. Terrible. Terrible. Was it Psalm 14? It's the same thing as um, Nimrod. If you don't put the gifts under the tree, the tree going to get you. Exactly. The tree going to attack you. Same thing. Was it Psalm 14 and verse 9? The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. For the ungodly... I'm sorry, because the point is this. Christmas is a reversal of that custom, because under Babylon, you gave gifts to the tree. You put gifts under the tree to give to the tree. Now it's reversed. Now, the, now you put gifts under the tree to give to yourselves. They just reversed it around. That's all they did. That's all I want. 14, verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. Right, that's Nimrod giving you gifts instead of you giving him for, gifts. For putting gold and silver on the tree, Nimrod right. giving you gifts. Right, that's what that is. Yep. Read. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. Read it again. For the ungodly and his ungodliness. For the ungodly and the actions of the ungodly. Go ahead. Are both alike hateful unto God. This goes back and they say God, lo God loves the sinner and hates the sin. The Bible says no, he hates both alike. That's this verse says. Read it again. For the ungodly and his ungodliness. And his ungodliness, go ahead. Are both alike hateful unto God. Are both the same and hated by God. That's what he's saying. Are both exactly the same and are hated by God. Jump down to verse 11 to 15. Verse 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the no, Gentiles. You know what? Read verse 10. Verse 10. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. Boom. Read it again. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. So if you make that, set that Christmas tree, you're going to get destroyed right along with it. Go ahead. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. I'm going to visit the other nations. I'm going to visit the other nations for making these gods. Go ahead. Because in, the, because in the creature of God. In the creation of God. Go ahead. They are become an abomination uh -huh. and stumbling blocks to the souls of men. And the snare to the feet of the unwise. And the snare to the feet of the unwise. Go ahead. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Christmas is spiritual fornication. New Year's, Halloween, Thanksgiving, those spiritual fornication. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, every so-called holiday outside the Bible or outside the ordinance of God 
is a spiritual fornication. Go ahead. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. And the invention of them, the corrupt, the corruption of life. Uh-huh, read on. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. Uh-huh. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Uh-huh. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Mm-hmm. Because the vain glory of men goes into Nimrod. Nimrod was deified as a god when he lived. When he died, they still worshipped him. He still received vain glory even in his death. Likewise, his mother slash wife. Likewise, his alleged son, Tammuz. Same nonsense. It was all formed by the vainglory of men to worship men. Santa Claus is worshipped. Saint Nick or Chris Kringle, same thing. They wo- he's worshipped and he doesn't even exist. Go ahead. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he hath made an image of his child soon taken away. Yes, Tammuz. Go ahead. Now honored him as a god. Uh, go ahead. Which was then a dead man. Or dead child, dead male. Go ahead. And delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Trees and gifts. Trees and gifts. That's what happened. Jump down to verse um, 16. Next verse. Thus in process of time. Thus as time went on. Go ahead. An ungodly custom. Of ceremonies and sacrifices. Go ahead. Grown strong was kept as a law. Grown strong means it gained popularity. It gained fame. It gained importance. It became what? Be- was kept what? Was kept as a law. It became a holiday. It was kept now as a law. Some of us get the day off. It's a, now it's a holiday. A day off. Go ahead. And graven. That's the gift. And that's also a gift. The- or a Christmas bonus. Exactly. That was a gift because in slavery they would give us those days off. Yep. That's the reason why we love those those yep. the, the Sunday Sundays worship. Yep. That's why we loved it because we associated it with a gift. Yep. Go ahead. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. By the king in this case would be America. That's the king, our king now. Let's jump to the next verse, no chapter. Uh, let's go to Isaiah five. Let's get out of there. Isaiah five and verse twenty. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Uh Uh-huh. Read it again. Woe unto them that call evil good. That call evil good. Because Christians, we call call evil good. Go ahead. And good evil. And we call those who don't celebrate Christmas, we call you evil. You're wicked. Go ahead. That put darkness for light. That put wickedness or, or, or evil for righteousness. Go ahead. And light for darkness. Yeah, and put and say that those who don't celebrate it are wicked or evil or are, 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 are killjoys, boring, lame. Go ahead. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Uh-huh. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. We start to make excuses in our own mind as to why we make light, darkness, and darkness light. Go ahead. And prudent in their own sight. And our prudent in, in our own sight. Make cognitive dissonance. It's the same thing. Make things up. Make excuses for why we do it when we don't have to do it. Read on. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Your strong drink would be that eggnog. That's your strong drink. They get drunk during Christmas, they eggnog, they look, they get look, look it up. That's what happens. Christmas party, all that nonsense. This is what happens. It never fails, especially among our people. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 13. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 13. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? You cannot make something good that the Mosai has made evil. If it's evil, it's evil. You cannot change it and make it something else. Christmas is an evil pagan Babylonian custom. You cannot take it. People go, oh, well, that's not why I celebrate because of this. I do it for that reason. The Lord says, no, it's, if it's crooked, it's crooked. You can't straighten it out into something else. If it's crooked, it's crooked. That's it. You can't change it around and make it something else. Same with Thanksgiving. Well, I, sub, I give thanks because, you know, my family. No, it's a, geno- it's a genocidal celebration. <laughs> you can't make it good. Hey, you ever seen like a family member? Here you're trying to tell them about Christmas, right? Let me see if any of y'all ever had this happen to. And they know you done told them that Christmas is evil as hell. 
I'm, I'm referring to cognitive dissonance again. And you take the Bible and run to them and you open the Bible in front of them and tell them to read it. Don't show me that! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they run. They almost beat the hell out of you. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're making them acknowledge something that's painful to them. So I'd rather, like, what was the word that you used? Um, willful ignorance? Yeah. That's another example of it. They want to be willfully ignorant because please don't show me the truth. Because if you show me the truth, exactly, it's causing dissonance. It's causing discomfort. Yeah, chapter 10, verse 5, same book. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, and verse 5. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeded from the ruler. As a sin which proceeds from the ruler or the king, like it said it was in the Psalmen, a custom established by kings. Go ahead. Folly is set in great dignity. Foolishness is set in high esteem. Christmas is folly set in high dignity. Halloween is set in high dignity, which is foolishness. New Year's, foolishness. Thanksgiving, foolishness. Easter, foolishness, but it's set in high dignity. Go ahead. And the rich sit in low place. And we sit in a low condition while these things are set in a high esteem. And while we're in a low place, we set it on high. You got brothers who spend their last dollar, they spend their rent money on a Christmas gift. Lights gonna go out. Oh well, you got the gifts. You gonna you gonna play PlayStation? You know the electricity. There's no electricity now. Con Edison loves the Negro in December. <laughs> he does. <laughs> huh? <laughs> love him. They love him. <laughs> you gonna buy a fast game TV and can't play because the electric electricity's off. Lights is out. They said about ten to twenty men in a neighborhood to turn your lights off mm -hmm. in one shot. They gotta get overtime. Calls people in to come in and say, listen, we need help turning off these people's electricity yep. because they can't pay the bill. <laughs> 8.14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, and verse 14. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men. Or women, to be just righteous people. Go ahead. Unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Who are considered to be wicked. There is a vanity in the earth where just men or happened to be recognized as the wicked. Go ahead. Again, there be wicked men. And you have wicked men or women. Go ahead. To whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. Who are counted righteous. Go ahead. I said that this also is vanity. This is the world. This is the world today we live in. Where the wicked are considered right and the righteous are considered wrong. Those who celebrate Christmas are considered right during the Christmas spirit. They're, 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 you know, they're in good cheer. The day of good cheer. Those are like, nah, it's wicked as hell. I'm not celebrating that. Oh, you're lame. See, you're, you're a killjoy. Your boy, you got to be so boring. It's just, it's just one day. You're messing up the spirit of Jesus. It's, this, <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. Psalm is saying in the spirit, I'm going to see, you're going to see righteous men and women being looked upon as being wicked or brainwashed or in a cult for not celebrating something that they learned from being brainwashed and being learned from a cult. Because Christianity is a cult. It's a brainwashing thing. It's the same thing. Get Proverbs 29 and 27. Right before Ecclesiastes. Proverbs 29, verse 27. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And an, an, an unrighteous man is an abomination to those who are righteous. Go ahead. And he that is upright is in the way. And he that is righteous. Go ahead. Is abomination to the wicked. We are an abomination to the world. We in this room are an abomination to the world. The world is going to hate you by default. And ye shall be hated of, of all, all men. nations. Right? Exactly. Start with your own kind than the other nations. Get, stay in there. Go 15, verse 27. 15, 27. Same the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 27. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. Read it again. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. Watch this. But he that had... What do I have to gain? Greed, covetousness, what I desire, what I want. I don't, if, if, if I celebrate it, I'm going to be able to get things that I can't afford. I can't afford a fast screen, but I can get one from my parents. 
I can't afford those bloody, what do they call them? That dumb woman, red bottoms. I want red bottoms. I can't afford red bottoms. Bloody shoes. Louis Vuitton, whatever, man. You need your bloody call them bloody shoes. Louis Vuitton makes some nonsense. They're yeah, shoes that are red in the bottom. Somehow they're worth five thousand dollars. I don't know. No, I'm being sarcastic, but it shouldn't even be worth a dollar. It's just shoes are red bottom. Anyway, you have Jakes that want those shoes. I can't afford them, but somebody else will buy them for me. So we sit there and we covet things. We we desire certain things we can't afford. We'll expect others to give it to us because of that greed, that thing I want, I need, I have to have it. And oftentimes, your brother will get a night hook and a brand new leather jacket for Christmas. Go outside and lose it, get robbed, or even killed for it. Read again. Eight ball, I call them eight ball jackets. Read again. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own soul. You make uh, his own house. Read again. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. You bring trouble to your home. You may get your child killed, get your wife robbed. You buy her a real fancy, you go to it, it, on commercials. What's that, the diamond commercial? Diamonds are forever. Yeah. By, by, what's his name? The commercial, who's the buy? Uh, Zales. 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 Your, your wife go out the street, she rocks that diamond, you bought her. Let's see, you know, you hit a police phone call, or your wife's been shot, so-and-so, diamond gone. You chubby your own house, because she wants that diamond. I want that necklace. You can't afford it right now, though. I understand. You go out, you go out your way to get it, and you get it, and she's gone. And the criminals know the season. You know what I'm saying? They will look to rob you around this time of the year. Yeah. Because they know time. this is the time when, the when, highest time when, of robbery. when yeah. cars get when cars get stolen. Their the trunks are busted open because yeah. they know that the people are in the, in a shopping mall going in. They're trying to be slick like they're security conscious. Mm-hmm. They go buy a whole bunch of stuff, walk to the car, put it in the car, lock it in the car, and then they go back and shop some more. And you got the thieves sitting in the. Yep. <laughs> okay. You got certain stores, like Walmart. <laughs> I'm telling you, people walk in and walk out the store with the gifts and follow the Negro home. No, I'm, no, you have certain uh, um, situations where you have stores mm-hmm. that people, Jakes, will walk in there with a cart, fill it up, and walk out the store. Oh yeah, don't Plenty buy nothing. That. No, just no. walk out the store. Like, like, like he owned it. But I'm talking about follow the car with the gifts home. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. And wait in the bush. Yep. Yep. Negro, the Negro. That was patient. in the news, wasn't the it? Negro's patient. Yeah. Stay in the snow and wait. They're like three, there was, there was a situation where three people robbed this house. I, I saw that in the news somewhere. And they got killed. They got shot. There was three black women and one dude, something like that. They went to rob this house because they was thinking there was some Christmas gifts in there. Mm-hmm. They said there's money, plenty of it. This is the time of the year. Everybody's saving, the, buying all kind of things, some flat screens, the whole kind of stuff under the tree. Mm-hmm. Trouble in your own house. Yep, read on. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, uh-huh. but he that hated gifts shall live. He that hates gifts shall live. You will not be robbed or killed because you're not celebrating that nonsense because you're not greedy of gain. You go through the neighborhood. Here you got a, here you got a bunch of dudes riding around in a car, sitting low in the seat because they, they're, they're up to no good, right? They pass by this house. They see Christmas decorations. So that's the house we're going to get. Pass another one, Santa Claus in the yard and all that foolishness. So they, they celebrate. The brightest house. Right. Then they pass two houses that don't have no decorations on it at all. They said, we don't want that. We know there ain't nothing in there. Yep. <laughs> you follow me? <laughs> Go ahead, Deacon. Isaiah 1, verse 23. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 23. Thy princes are rebellious. Our leaders are rebellious. And companions of thieves. Uh-huh. Everyone loveth gifts. Everyone what? Everyone loveth gifts. Uh-huh. And followeth after rewards. And look for rewards, for presents. Go ahead. They judge not the fatherless. They don't do their people. Neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. They don't judge righteously. Because they, they're looking for gifts, for bribery. They love gifts, and they love gifts, and they seek reward. And follow after rewards. That's the mindset of our people today. The same thing. They don't do right with their people. They desire gifts, and they want rewards, presents. Get Ecclesiasticus 20, verse 14. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 20, verse 14. The gift of a fool shall do thee no good when thou hast it. Uh-huh. 
neither yet of the envious for his necessity. For he looketh to receive many things for one. Because often, you ever had that situation where a person will get you a nice gift and you bought him a scarf? It'll get, it get you a stereo. You go, oh, I, I got you something too. What would you get me? Open a, open a you gift. You got him a pair of socks. <laughs> socks? I got plenty of socks. What the hell is this? Meanwhile, you got a shiny jewelry in your neck from them. They, they expect more from you. It get, you get in trouble. You get you have problems come with that holiday. People get in the fist fights, all of that, because you get they get a cheap gift. Then they you, talk about even you. a woman. Woman get mad at you. You bought me this. This what I'm worth to you. Relationships all destroyed over it. Breakups, divorces, all kind of nonsense going on over this nonsense over this holiday. Nonsense takes place. Read again. The gift of a fool shall do thee no good when thou hast it. Uh-huh. Neither yet of the envious for his necessity. For he looketh to receive many things for one. So again, gifts cause problems. Gifts are going to cause issues in the house, especially during this time. People accept, people ex- expect things that some people can't afford to give them. And during this season, they is want, want, I. It's a selfish season. I, I, me, 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 I. That's what it's all about. You know, do you no good in the end? Get Matthew 2, verse 1. Now let's get the mythical story of the wise men. Let's read that. You know what's funny about, about gifts, uh, Deacon? How m- I don't know, maybe, pay, maybe people don't know nothing about this. When so-called Mother's Day come around, y'all all right? Yep. When so-called Mother's Day come around, I used to work retail many years ago. And the biggest item that would sell on so-called Mother's Day was microwave ovens. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we could not keep enough of them. There'd be a truckload that'd come in with 200 ovens, and they'd be gone by midday. Every mama got a got a microwave oven. The problem with that is that is this, they're saying that I love my mama. I love my mama. The scriptures say, "Honor thy father, thy mother, every day." But here comes this one day. You ain't said nothing to her. You ain't dealt nothing. Now you're giving her an oven. You don't even you ain't, you don't even know if she could cook. You're just giving her an oven. The point is, your gift is supposed to reflect your feelings in reality. But our people are programmed to give superficial fake gifts at their time, at the time appointed. Whether it's Christmas, whether it's uh, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day. And they just feel like they have to rush. I ain't seen them all year. Don't give a damn about them. But the day the the store's about to close, go get your mother a, a microwave oven. That kind of thing. This is evil. This, 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 this system is so demonic, it ain't even funny. Go ahead. Get Matthew 2, verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1. The story goes as this. The wise men came, three wise men came, and this is how Christmas with the gifts. They gave, and, and they, uh, gave gifts or whatever. This, this is the whole point of um, the docs about giving gifts. The, the sugar-coated, whitewashed, watered-down Christianity twist they give as an excuse for giving gifts during this time. Read this. Read on. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Come to worship him. Go ahead. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. All the evil elders with him. Go ahead. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Uh And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor. That shall rule my people Israel. Right, Micah 5 and 2. That's what that is. Micah 5 and 2. Go ahead. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. When did the chariots show up? Go ahead. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. It was a chariot. It wasn't a regular star. Go ahead. It, it, stood over, it, it guided them to where the, where the child was born. Go ahead. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Uh -huh, these wise men, go ahead. And when they were come into the house. When they came into Joseph and Mary's house, watch this. They saw the young. It, well, it wasn't three. It was a caravan. It wasn't three of them. It was a bunch of them. Read verse 11 again. And when, they, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Uh-huh. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him. No, they presented unto each other. They presented unto him. Unto, the, unto Christ, the baby, unto, his, unto him. Go ahead. Gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. So they did that in honor of the Messiah. None of us give gifts to the Messiah on this day. None of us. There was no exchange. They came to worship him and give, they gave, the, or gave to him, but they gave it to the parents, obviously, as a baby. They gave it to the parents in honor of him. You understand? They didn't exchange gifts. Oh, I got something for you, too. Here you go. That didn't happen. That did not happen. So when you celebrate Christmas, you're not giving gifts to the Messiah at all. So why are you doing it? Because Esau makes things up. He makes things up as he goes along, and we fall behind it. Go ahead. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. That's all I want. Now, let's get real quick. Baruch, I'm going to show you what Esau does. Baruch again, left this out. Get yeah, Baruch 3, verse 16. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, and verse 16. Where are the princes of the heathen become, and such as ruled the beast upon the earth? So the princes are the rulers of the heathen. What happened to them? They live and they die. Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. Young men have seen light and dwelt upon the earth, but the way of knowledge have they not known. The way of knowledge have they not known is the, our Bible was not known by the heathen. They didn't have our understanding. Go ahead. Nor understood the paths thereof. Because God didn't give them wisdom. The Bible. God didn't give the nations the Bible. Go ahead. Nor laid hold of it. Uh huh. Their children were far off from that way. They didn't get the Bible. Go ahead. It hath not been heard of in Canaan. The Canaanites didn't have our wisdom. Neither hath it been seen in Timon. Timon is the wise of Edom. The word of God was not found among the Canaanites nor Edomites. Go ahead. The Agarines. Or Africans. Go ahead. That seek wisdom upon the earth, the merchants of Meran, and of the, the and of Theman, uh, Timon. and of Timon, Timon, go ahead. the authors of fables. What are they? The authors of fables. Edomites, these heathens are authors of fables. They make things up. Go ahead. And searches out of understanding. They seek wisdom, but they they don't, they don't have this, so they make things up. Go ahead. None of these have known the way of wisdom. Or remember her paths. None of these have the way of wisdom, nor know her paths. They are the authors of fables. Christmas is a fable. That's why Paul said, beware of Jewish fables. Because heathens make things up. Why do they call it Jewish fables? Think about the two terms. Why do they call it Jewish fables? I see a hand in the back. I see a hand over here on this side here. Give it to my brother here. Jewish fables. I want you, I want you to um, go ahead. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, they say it's Jewish fables because they say it has something to do with God, but it has nothing to do with God. Really, it's a lie. It's a fable. Right, it's meaning lies laced with, with tenets from the Bible. Okay, they've been doing this throughout history. I wish we had, there was some, we had books on this kind of stuff where it showed you um, how the Greeks, you know what I'm talking about, right? That book, he told me, right, how the Greeks and Romans have taken Babylonian customs because they wanted to subvert Israel into following pagan gods. So they use tenets from the Bible and lace them inside these pagan customs, like Christmas, for an example, telling you that it has to do with Jesus, just like they do today. The Easter, what was Christmas really about? The celebration of Tammuz and Nimrod and all that evil. Y'all all right? Same thing with Easter. What was that about? The Queen Ashtoreth, okay? The goddess of fertility. But what did they do? They tied it up and say that that's about the resurrection of Christ or something. You follow me? So they use these things to subvert Israel into following pagan customs, but in our, but 
in our ignorance, we think we're following Jesus. Right. That's the reason why you'd hear me or the, most of us say, what does a Christmas, to, to try to wake the dead brains up. What does a Christmas tree and some light bulbs have to do with Jesus? Nothing. Mm -hmm. What does an Easter rabbit, a, a bunny rabbit and eggs, rabbits don't even lay eggs. Yep. The, the common sense didn't even come there. What does a rabbit and eggs have to do with Jesus? Nothing. But in a Jewish fable, they put those two together. Meaning Jew, meaning Jewish pertaining to Jews, meaning pertaining to the records of the Jews, and put it with fables, lies. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow me? All right. Go ahead, Deacon. Psalms, Psalms 94, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, and verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Which frameth mischief by a law. That's these holidays are. They are laws of mischief framed by law. Law makes it where these days are to be observed. That's why you notice, like, for example, on a Sabbath day, Friday, Saturday, the streets are filled with people, filled with people, thousands of people, whether holiday or not, it's a weekend. And they always have weekend sales. Then come Sunday, and the streets are empty. Not a belly of soul out there. Stores all closed up. Even around Christmas time, everyone's home. New Year's, everybody's home. Thanksgiving, everybody's home. It's quiet. It's madness how he has framed evil. He's framed sin by law. He makes sin a law. That's what he's done. The throne of iniquity is this captivity we're in now, Babylon. Hey, when it comes to like today, today is Satan's, well, this is the Sabbath for us, but I'm talking about in terms of shopping. The, the, those people are going crazy in those malls right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. afraid to drive. I'm going to be honest with you because there's some fool running to get a tree or something. And he's going to slide into me or something. Mm -hmm. I really do not want to be on the road. No time. It's fool's day. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Sure. And I'm telling you, I'm trying to stay away from I'm on the road. I'm like, all you niggas stay over there. Mm -hmm. I don't want y'all near me because I know y'all crazy. Running after that, whatever this. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know, come Sunday, it's going to be no, well, I don't know. They might be trying to get some last minute because it's, what is Sunday it's supposed to be Christmas Eve? Yeah. So the, the madness is going to continue. Yep. You know. But y'all understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. They out here. They are out here. I was just coming here today. No, the normal route that I take is be, be nice and smooth. Every car trying to get into this mall over here at Cross County. I mean, the, the, the highway is backed up. Because they're all trying to get in there to get the last minute stuff. I don't want to be around these people. I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. Come on. 21. Psalms chapter 94 verse 21. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous uh -huh. and condemn the innocent blood. Condemn the righteous. Innocent blood is the righteous. And condemn us for not celebrating that mischief, the mischievous law. They don't partake in it. So we looked upon as bad. Which like, like Solomon said, um, he has saw under the sun. Um, the just being considered wicked, and the wicked being considered just. It's the same exact thing. Good being called evil, and evil being called good. Me trying to get away from him on the road, they'd be, they'd be running up to me talking about something. Merry Christmas! Yeah. I said Merry Christmas! <laughs> get um. Get um, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, and verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they do sacrifice to devils. Read again. And, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. That's what we do. They don't sacrifice it to God. That's not about God. It's about themselves, about their greed and their lust. Them idols. Go ahead. And I would not that they that ye should have fellowship with devils. Do not have fellowship or friendship or partake with devils. Go ahead. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot serve two gods. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve your own idol and then serve God at the same time. Is it the one or the other? Go ahead. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Uh huh. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? No, we're not. We cannot sit there and, and trim our way to seek love. Oh, I, well, my parents, when my mom and dad want, want to see me, you know, so just, just for one night I'm going to go over there. 
I don't want any gifts. I'm just going to sit there with them and try to bring them the Bible. Don't lie to us. Don't come with that nonsense. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go over there, you know, just spend some time with them real quick, you know. Sit down with them, you know, try to give them the scriptures and show them, you know, why it's wrong on the day of. Stop that. Don't do that. We've heard that for years. It's a lie. Stop doing it. You're there because you want to be there because everybody else is going to be there. Don't sit there and make things up, make up. That's that cognitive dissonance again, trying to reduce the discomfort mm-hmm. of leaving your family, not being there for your mom. Your mom and dad want to see you. They expect to see you like they do every other year. So just to not hurt their feelings too much, uh, I'll just go. I'll just sit around. I won't take the gifts. I'll just watch them open the gifts. I'll, I'll watch them open their own gifts. Mm. What the hell are you there for in the first Won't be there at all. They ain't going to take you serious if you sit there with them. They ain't going to take you seriously. I go right back to them saying you can't reprove. You're sitting there. You can't reprove, you can't reprove nobody if you're sitting there with them. You're going to say, nah, I'm good. I ain't celebrate that no more. So I ain't going to eat the turkey, but you're sitting there. Right. Just smelling it. Smelling it. Why don't you have some turkey? <laughs> Your aim is 5 to 21. The book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days. Read again. I hate, I despise your feast days. I despise your feast days. Go ahead. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Your turkeys, your dinners. I'm not done with that. I'm not involved in that. Go ahead. It's the most I talking. Go ahead. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard peace offerings of your fat beasts. Uh Uh-huh. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. Them Christmas carols. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that, the Lord is saying. I don't want to hear no dumb songs. Go ahead. For I will not hear the melody of thy vials. I don't want to hear those songs. I don't want none of that nonsense. The Most High does not like those Christmas carols, none of those themes. He's not into that. Because that's not his feast day. That's your feast day. Not his. That's the world's feast day. The world's feast day songs. Get Matthew 10.35. The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Right, you're going to have problems. Those of you coming to this troop not to have problems, I I feel sorry for you. You come to this troop, you're going to have problems. You're going to have to make enemies you don't want, primarily of your own household. Read again, 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father uh-huh. and the daughter against her mother right. and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Most of the time in the troop, your first enemy is your relatives, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife. And those become your first enemies. The first one, the first one you do, you, you, you crazy. You're on a call. You crazy. You are celebrate what? Why? When you explain to them why, I don't want to hear why. But you just ask me why. I don't want to hear it. That's damn demons. One time I told a relative, I said, you want to see in the Bible? One time I tried. One time I said, you want, I'm going to show you in the Bible. They was like, no. That was a woman. That was a demon. That was a woman's voice. That was a cognitive dissonant demon. No. No. I was like, wow. Time to go. Head start spending. It's time to, it's, it's a wrap. It's time to leave. Read again. For I am come to set a man at variance. No, 36. Verse 36. A man's foes shall be they of his own household. You understand that. In this troop, your enemies are going to be those who are most closest to you. Friend or family. You have to accept that. Otherwise, you're going to fall. Next verse. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Loving them is by going to their house anyway, knowing they're celebrating the devil. That's loving the father or mother more than God. Trimming your ways to seek love, like Jeremiah said. Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You go back to them kids. You, you, you put your kids first. So my kids celebrate it. You know, I don't want to hurt their feelings. All the other kids, is, all the other kids are going to brag to my kids about how they got this gift and that gift and this gift and that gift. So I have to do it. Because my kids will be depressed. Well, listen, I'll give you a gift. All throughout the year, except that day. How about that? What kid will complain? What child will complain if you give them gifts throughout the year? They cannot complain. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. That's true because there's, there's, the, the, there's the peer pressure of the crowd. But it's your job to instill in your children to not have any care or concern for that day. 
at all. That's the dangers of the world. That's the dangers of the world. It's the influence. The influence is the dangers of this world. You get um, Ecclesiastes 6 and 13. Ecclesiastes 6 and 13. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 13. Honor and shame is in talk, uh-huh. and the tongue of man is his fall. Hold on a second. Is that what? Give me a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, 6 and 13. Thank you. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 13. Separate thyself from thine enemies. Remember what he said earlier? Your enemies shall be those of your own household. Read again. Separate thyself from thine enemies. The Bible says separate yourself from your enemies. So those of you who live with your enemy, your parents, find somewhere to go that day. Just find somewhere to go. Find something to do. Until that night is over. Because again, read again. Separate thyself from thine enemies. Separate yourself from from your enemies. Do not partake in that evil. Go ahead. And take heed of thy friends. And take heed of your friends. Because some of your friends are very influential also. They'll try to seduce you into that nonsense as well. Take heed of these friends you have. For those that live with, with the demonic family members, that's the point, right? Yeah. And then comes come that particular hell day, leave. They might hold that against you. They say, why weren't you here when we dealt with the tree? And you weren't here when we dealt with the festivities. Where were you? And, you know, you try to tell them about the scriptures, and they might just completely flip on you after that. Just keep that in mind. The demons are no joke. They are really spiritually linked to our people. Our people got some serious demons on them about these holidays. Verse 17. Verse 17. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. The right way. Go ahead. For as he is. As your friend is. Go ahead. So shall his neighbor be also. So your friends are those who are like you. Who don't celebrate those customs. Who don't separate themselves from their family. Who keep the the, the Lord's holidays. Those are friends. Not relatives that try to influence you to do something contrary to that. That's not a friend. That's an enemy. That's an immediate enemy, not an immediate family member. An immediate enemy, not relative. Jump to. Y'all understand that, right? That's why Christ said, Where, who's my mother? Who's my father? Yep. Who are my brothers? They, these, they're ones that do the will of my, of the, of my father in heaven. Yep. 422. The book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 22. Except no person against thy soul. Uh-huh, except no, including your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter. Go ahead. Except no person against thy soul. Against your own soul. Go ahead. And let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. Don't allow your love for any man, especially if you're a family, to cause you to fall on this truth. Do not fall for the sake of the love of relatives for this truth. Now I'm give you an example. Some of y'all will sit there and go and celebrate these customs like Thanksgiving or New Year's or Christmas, spend time with them, right? Ask those same relatives to celebrate feast day with you. Ask them to celebrate Passover with you. Have them not eat unleavened bread for seven days. See how that works out for you. See if they do it. See if they do it. See if they'll go in a tent and tabernacles for seven days. See if they do it. See if they do it. They're not going to do it. That shows you whose side they're on and whose side you're on. You celebrating Satan and so are they. There's, there's, there's an imbalance in that. They're not going to do that for you. So why are you doing that for them? In other words, they're not going to trim their ways to seek your love. That's right. the point. The hell with you. That's, that's their thought. You want to go do that? You do that. I ain't doing that. It should be your same mindset as theirs. Well, I'm not doing that either. That's the point. Right. Isaiah 29 verse 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, 
but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. These hol holiday habits come from someone. It didn't just fall in our lap out of nowhere. We came up with them slave ships. We weren't celebrating no damn Christmas. These things were introduced to us. They were forced into our minds through slavery, through oppression, colonialism, enslavement, indoctrination. That's how we learned it. And it became, it became gen generational. But now we celebrate these things and have no idea why we do it because our parents imparted it onto us. So now we do it by nature. We do it by impulse. Okay? Read on. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. That's what's happening right now. The wisdom of, the, of our oppressor's wise men is beginning to die. People are starting to wake up. We no longer live in a world of ignorance. There's no, the, uh, ignorance, we live in an age where it's no longer an excuse to be ignorant. You have internet, you have Google, you can go online. What is the origin of Christmas? Boop, and you'll see it. It pops up. It's, not, it's no longer go to the library, go through all these books. It's common. Ignorance, no, we no longer live in an age where ignorance is an excuse. You are either ignorant or you're willfully stupid as hell. It's one or the other. There's no gray area. That's deep what you just said there, Deacon. Because as the, as the, 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 the satanic rulers of this system that allows, like what you said, this is an age where you can go and just Google the origin of Christmas and it all pops up. Yeah. He's so bold in saying to himself, I'll put the truth out there. I will allow them to research it. And they still will yeah. celebrate my holidays. Yeah. Yeah, and he gets off on that. Yeah. Read it, read it again. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. That wonder is the, us waking up, us beginning to rise up as a people, coming to our nationality, repenting, learning that we're Israelites. That's a marvelous work. That's a marvelous change that people are beginning to see, and the, and the heathens don't like it. And the jakes who are in the sunken place, they don't like it either. They don't like it either. Go ahead. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. With the wisdom of the, of the wise men who taught us their precepts back in verse 15 is starting to die off. It's starting to get old. Listen, I'm not celebrating that. That's evil. Go ahead. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Shall be removed. And no one will see it anymore. Go ahead. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their no, counsel. No, 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 no. Hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I want, read that. Read that. I'm sorry. Read that. Verse 15, woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. These customs, these holidays, are, there's, there's think tanks behind this stuff. You, back in the day, you had Halloween. Halloween took place at the end of October. Now it's almost damn near a month-long celebration. I'm seeing people wearing hot costumes October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. Then as October is ending, Thanksgiving's coming in. Now you go into the store, you'll see like the Thanksgiving stuff. Then as December come, music's playing. Then as you, they move you into, transition you into um, Christmas. Then into New Year. Then into, it's, it's, they keep you constantly brainwashed. Constant, constantly brainwashed. Read again. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. These things are done in secret, in the dark. Go ahead. And they say, who seeth us? And who knoweth us? No one knows what they're doing. The Lord sees them, but they feel no one sees what they're doing. No one knows what we're doing. No one knows that we're trying to keep them in sin. No one sees that. The Lord sees it. Get Psalm 64, verse 5. Where do these holidays and customs come from? Where do they get them from? The book of Psalms, chapter 64, and verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. That's that same secret counsel back in Isaiah. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. Go ahead. They commune of laying snares privily. They communicate in laying traps or those holidays privately. Go ahead. They say, who shall see them? That's in Isaiah also. Who shall see them? Go ahead. They search out iniquities. They search out the traditions and evils of the other nations of antiquity. The evil traditions and customs of antiquity. Christmas is an evil of antiquity. New Year's, an evil of antiquity. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter are all pagan customs of antiquity. Sins of, sins of old. Go ahead. 
They accomplish a diligent search. And they have excavations, archaeologists dig it up, and they figure it out. They learn it. Interpreters, translators, they figure it out, and they, and they whitewash it and water it down. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every oh, sorry, one of they're them. they're successful. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. And they're deep. And you sit down, you learn it, you're like, you're like, wow, that was evil as hell. Wow. That's corrupt. Evil, that's corrupt. And evil. you realize you're like, whoa, that's some, it took some thought into that. They take thought into keeping us brainwashed. There's much thought and much meticulous detail in keeping us in that slave mind to celebrate. That's why you mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier as, as you um, follow behind how, um, how we live in an age where the Esau is so pride, prideful, even with all the information he gives you, he's like, yeah, you're going to do what I say regardless. That's how, my, that's how wise they are. They have, they have contingency plans. If the plan A don't work, we got plan B, we got plan C, we got plan D. Their thought is deep. You can't escape their grasp. If you fall out of one hand, you fall into another hand. Either way, they got you. The thought is deep. Go to Isaiah 29, verse 16. Go back to Isaiah 29 and read verse 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 16. They don't have you on holidays, they have you on sports. If they don't have you on sports, they have you on religion. If they don't have you on religion, they have you on politics. If they don't have you on politics, they have you in, in whatever. In philo- and whatever, birthdays, things like that, um, whatever. Homosexuality or financial. They, they have you on some bag of, or another. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. The world has been turned upside down. Go back to homosexuality. The world has been turned upside down. Gay is straight. Straight is gay. Black is white. White is black. Good is evil. Evil is good. Go ahead. Read again. Surely your, thir- surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Why the potter's clay? Because the most I can take, whatever Esau has molded this world into, and molded back to how it originally was. Bring, bring things right side up, turn things back to normal. Go ahead. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made, he made, he made me not. Evolution. Go ahead. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding. No, they can't say that. The most High is going to come behind and mold things back the way it was originally. Things back to normal. And put us back in rulership. Get Isaiah 60 verse 2. Let me say something real quick. Yeah. Uh, we read the scripture earlier where we read about the heart of every one of them is deep. Meaning the mind is deep. Think about what goes on in the churches where you got the Negro preacher? Follow me. They got the Negro preacher that's in. He's got the Bible open in the church. And there's a Christmas tree in the church. You follow me? That takes some deep thinking to make the people, including the preacher, think that he's dealing with something righteous. And Jeremiah 10 is in all the Bibles. That takes some death. He had, to, he had to go and sit down and get bum-rushed by Satan to be able to come up with something like this here. He had to go and wake Satan up, said, Satan, listen, I need some real power. I need to use tenets of the Bible and, make, and, and mix it with these pagan demonic holidays and have it taught in a church where it's supposed to be the house of God. Y'all all right? Yes. <laughs> go ahead. That's some real demon there. That's some real demon, demons going on in there. Serious demons. The bo- Isaiah 60 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2. For, for behold, the darkness shall cover no, the yeah, earth. Read, read verse 1. Read verse 1. I want, I, I, verse 1. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now go back to that marvelous rock in Isaiah 29. That marvelous rock among the people. We're starting to rise up as a nation. We're starting to realize who we are, what God requires of us, what God wants us to do, and how God wants us to change in this captivity. So he's saying, arise and shine. Let your light so shine before men. Saying the same exact thing. Read again. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, Uh and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Shine upon you. Go ahead. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness shall cover the earth. Means sin shall cover the earth. Go ahead. And gross darkness, the people. Gross darkness is our people. Our people are in the deepest of darkness. 
All nations are in darkness, but our people are in the deep, deep. We're in space. We're like in, in a black hole somewhere. We're in a sunken place. That's where we are. The darkest place possible. Where the white man is in the driver's seat in our brain, and we're in the back seat. Just chilling, sleep. We ain't in the back seat. We're on the back of the car. We ain't even in the truck. <laughs> under the, yeah, under the damn car. Read again. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people. Gross darkness the people. Go ahead. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Because some of us are going to wake up out of that darkness and come out of it. That's what's going to happen. Go to Jeremiah 51, verse 7. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 7. Yep, watch this. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. I mean, Babylon rules. Go ahead. That made all the earth drunken. All, er, all nations far behind Babylon's example, including modern Babylon, America. Go ahead. The nations have drunken of her wine. The nations have drunken her wine. Go ahead. Therefore, the nations are mad. The nations are crazy, too. And then you, have, you have Muslims who have their God, Allah, their, their God, and they celebrate in Christmas. That's a so-called Christian holiday. You have Muslims celebrating Christmas. That's madness. You have atheists celebrating Christmas. That's madness. Buddhists, Hindus celebrating Christmas. That is madness. Comedic Negroes in the unconscious community celebrating Christmas. Madness. Well, they're in gross darkness. But the nations themselves who have their own gods, even the Chinese, Japanese, they have, it's, all, it's, it's madness. But our people are in work, are more mad. We're in gross darkness. Gross means the, the the complete. We're in complete darkness. You have net and you have gross. We are in gross darkness. <laughs> All the darkness is like we're right in the middle of it. The nations is jacked up, but we are far worse. Yeah. You can't, you can't even, even see us. You can't even find us you in the darkness. You can't even see us in there. Nations are in the room looking for them. You can't even find them. You'll feel a heathen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, Jake, yeah. where's Jake? Jake, <laughs> he's gone. Oh, no, he's gone. I can't get that. I can't. I'm going to get lost. Get 13, verse 16. Same book. Jeremiah, chapter 13, verse 16. Yep. Give glory to the Lord your God before he cause darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. That's us. The most I said, give glory to me or I'm going to put you in darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. Go ahead. And while you look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. So the shadow of death is gross darkness. The shadow of death is slavery. That's what it is. The shadow of death, because your people are not really dead, literally. We're spiritually dead, so it's a foreshadowing. It's a shadow of death. Wherever Israel scattered abroad, we are in the shadow of death. We are in the valley of the shadow of death. Not Coolio. Don't start singing that song. <laughs> Read it again. Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. Uh -huh. And while you look for light, you look for light. Go ahead. He turn it into the shadow of death uh -huh. and make it gross darkness. That's what he did. He, made, he put us in gross darkness. Go ahead. It was too late for us. Go ahead. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. Your heart in the heavens. Go ahead. And my eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. That's how you know that the shadow of death and gross darkness is captivity. The Lord's flock is carried away captive. Where? Into the shadow of death. Into gross darkness. You understand? Go to 2 Maccabees 4. So while in that gross darkness, what happened to us? While in that captivity, what happened to us? What did we begin to do? Because normally, a person that's accustomed to being in the light, you know, they're, they're accustomed to that. But after when you get put in the darkness, you, you can't see. You're blind. You start throwing around, trying to figure out where to go. But after a while, you get used to it. Ah, oh, you know what? It's not that bad. You stay in the darkness. You stay there. You become complacent. You get comfortable. That dissonance starts to arise up in you. You're like, ah, I don't need to see nothing anyway. I don't need to see. I don't need no damn lights anyway. Who needs lights? I'm good. Right. You start to justify it. Yep. Rationalize. 
You start calling Rationalize that, you start it. Call, That's ration, the word. You start Thank calling you. that darkness. Exactly. Rationalize it. You start calling that darkness home. Second Maccabees 4, 16. The book of Second Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 16. Verse 15. Verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. That'll be our Bibles now. Go ahead. But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. You love white folks more than anything else. Go ahead. By reason whereof, sore calamity came upon them. For they had them to be their enemies and avengers. The Greeks were our enemies. Go ahead. Whose custom they followed so earnestly. Whose customs that are vain, we followed so earnestly. Meaning diligently. Wholeheartedly. Go ahead. And unto whom they desired to be like in all things. Gross darkness. Unto whom we desire to be like in all things. From how they dress, to how they speak, to what they celebrate, to marrying their men and marrying their women. We became, we fell into gross darkness. Verse, next verse. For it is not a light thing to do wickedly against the laws of God. Uh -huh. But the time following shall declare these things. We are, we are in the time following. We are still in the time following, shall declare these things. We, we are a living example of what happens when you go against the laws of God. The ghettos, the slums, the, the, the jail, the abortions, the single mother fatherhood, the murders, the, the ghettos, the whoredom, the, gun, the, the violence. That is, that is a declaration of what happens when you forsake the laws of God. I'll read this book. I got to read it. This is a book. I don't want to read it. I don't want to let the price to go up to $1,000. Too late. Thank you, Diddy Outside. I appreciate you. I ain't going to let you get away with it. You put it up there. The people out there want to see it. I'm just going to read it. I'm going to read it. You're going to bring it's this called, arsenal in here and then not pull uh, it up. It's called, it's called The Ten Tribes of Israel. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'll praise it. So I can use it. All right. You can use it. It's called, yeah, thank you. <laughs> this is called The Ten Tribes of Israel. Uh, or Seth, the, wait the a minute, Ten Tribes of Israel, or the true history of the North American Indians, showing that they are the descendants of the Ten Tribes, by Timothy R. Jenkins. What's the book called again? Say it again. Title. The name of the uh, the title of the book is the Ten Tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. or the true history of the North American Indians, showing that they are descendants of these ten tribes. Right. By Timothy R. Jenkins. Right. In short. Many, and indeed it may be said, most of the learned men who did pay any particular attention to these natives of the wilderness at their first coming among them, both English and Spaniards were struck with their great likeness to the Jews. With their what? With, great li with their great likeness to the Jews. No, this is my class last week, how the Israelites were being kicked out of Spain and Portugal. Remember that? So the Spanish that came over here said, wow, these guys look at the, at the same guys. We're kicking out of Spain because it's the same people. Go ahead. The Indians in New Jersey about 1681 are described as persons straight in their limbs beyond the usual proportion in most nations, very seldom crooked or deformed, their features regular, their countenances sometimes fierce, in common, re in common rather resembling a Jew than a Christian. A, a Jake than a white person is what he's saying. Go ahead. It shall, it shall now be our business to collect those facts in their history that are well attested with those which may be known for them from personal knowledge of men of character or from their present manners. I'm sorry. Jew and Christian also means how they dressed. How they dressed. Read it again. I'm sorry. It shall now be our business to collect those facts in their history that are well attested with those which may be known of them from personal knowledge of men of character or from their present manners, customs, and habits. Now, this book is found in the Library of Congress. That's why I bought it. This, these, are, these accounts are found in the Library of Congress. Go ahead. We are well advised, and it should be constantly borne in mind. We are well advised regarding them, and it should be carried in your mind. Go ahead. That the corruption of both principle and practice introduced amongst them. Oh, yeah, you them. found it. Okay, yeah, it's, on, it's on PDF. Yes, yeah, PDF. I don't want to spoil it, but okay, it's on PDF. Y'all can, can be, you don't have to buy the book. You can just put it on PDF. I must be snitching, man. Stop snitching over there, man. Nah, um, yeah, blow it up some more so you can see it. 
It shall now be our business to collect those facts in their history that are well attested with those which may be known of them from personal knowledge of men of character or from their present manners. Men of character means men of, of, of repute, men who actually have wisdom and knowledge, who are not just regular people. Go ahead. Knowledge of men of character or from their present manners, customs, and habits. Although we are well advised and it should be constantly borne in mind that the corruption of both principle and practice introduced amongst them by their connection with Europeans has so debased their morals. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's read it again. That it should be what? Constantly what? Born in mind what? It should, be, it should be constantly born in mind that the corruption of both principle and practice. The corruption of both our prince of their principle, I mean the natives, and their practices. Go ahead. Introduced by who? Introduced amongst them by their connection with Europeans. That's the cause of our corruption in my principles and our practices. So basically, Deacon, the the so-called white man didn't civilize nothing. No. He, he destroyed their civilization. That's what it. this is telling you. Yeah, he's going to say it. Watch. Go ahead. Has so debased their morals and, and, vi and violated all their powers of mind that they are quite degenerated from their ancestors. We made them into Negroes. He made us in a sunken place. Gross darkness. He says, they debased us. Their morals and vitiated all their powers of mind. I mean, our thoughts are gone. That they are quite degenerated from their ancestors. Remember he said in Jeremiah, you become a degenerate, a degenerate plant unto me. Same thing. Go ahead, watch this. An old Caribbean Indian, no, an old Indian. An, an old Carib Indian, an old Carib Indian, in a very early day, thus addressed one of the these white people. Or Caribbean, is that Caribbean Indian? Caribbean. Or Caribbean Indian, yeah, Caribbean Indian, go ahead. An old Caribbean Indian, in a very early day, thus addressed one of these white people. So addressed one of these white people that spoke quote, to them. Go ahead. Quote. Our people are become almost as bad as yours. Our people became almost as bad as yours. Go ahead. We are so much altered since you came among us. Will you change us since you've been among us? Go ahead. That we hardly know ourselves. We hardly <laughs> go ahead. And we think it owing and we think it owing to so melancholy a change. A sad it's a sad change. Go ahead. That hurricanes are more frequent than formerly. Bad things are happening more so since our change than before. Go ahead. It is the evil spirit that has done all this. You. Who has taken our best lands from us? The most, he called them, he called them an evil spirit. He called Edom an evil spirit that, that, that's done what? Has, who has taken our best lands from us. Uh-huh. Both sides, on this side of the world and in um, Jerusalem. Go ahead. And given us up to the dominion of Christians. Of who? Of Christians. The dominion of Christians. Christians made us debased and demoralized? And Really? Go ahead. West Indies, volume one. Immoralized. Go ahead. West in, uh, Edwards, this was Edwards history, history, West, West Indies. Indies, first volume, 28. Go ahead. And yet, we're, and yet we were gravely assert. This is a white man. Yet we, this white man saying this, and yet we gravely assert. Go ahead. And yet we gravely assert that we have benefited the Indian nations by teaching them the Christian religion. So, These so people we, are sick. We lie and tell you that we benefited them. But they're saying to us, no, you made us worse. Keep going. The Indians have. The, the Indians have so degenerated that they cannot at this time give any tolerable account of the origin of their religious rites, ceremonies, and customs. Although religiously attached to them as the command of the great spirit to their forefathers. Who that? That's the Lord. The great spirit is the Lord. So, so it says they, they, they were so destroyed. They keep traditions and customs that go back to the Bible and forgot it comes from the Bible. So but they, they hate the Bible now. Right. So the great spirit is gone and they replace it with Christianity, right. which destroyed them. Go ahead. You mm -hmm. going? Suppose, suppose a strange people to be discovered before wholly unknown to the civilized world and an iniquity was instituted. An inquiry. In inquiry. And an inquiry was instituted. instituted into their origin, or from what nation they had sprang. What mode of examination would be most likely to succeed and lead 
to a to a r- rational solution of the question of who they are. I saw one of who they are. I'll get to that later. Go back to the scriptures. This is that's off topic, but I'll get to, I, I have to, I have to spoil it because some they're gonna buy it. They're gonna spoil it first. So I gotta bring it out first. Okay, I'll spoil it. Second has just eight twenty seven. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, and verse 27. Uh-huh. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen. Go ahead. But desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction. But desire those like you who keep the commandments of God while in captivity, while in the afflictions. Do not regard the inventions of the heathen. These holidays are inventions of the other nations. Go to 1 Peter 2 and 9. 1 Peter 2 and 9. Read the verse 12. So we've seen that the Christian religion, the Christianity, made us immoral and base. They didn't make us better. It made us worse. These holiday Christmas is a so-called Christian custom. It makes us greedy. It makes us covetous. Even if it were the Messiah's birthday, we don't celebrate it for that reason. Let's say it was. We don't celebrate it for that reason. We celebrate because we want the gifts. It's about being covetous, greed, lust, as it all boils down to. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 9. And where in the Bible did the Messiah say celebrate his birthday? What scripture is that? Just ask him that question. Well, when the Bible does it show me that his birthday is tomorrow or, the day, or in two days, and where did he say celebrated at? Where is that in the scriptures? It's nowhere in the Bible. Sometimes they, try to be, they call it Xmas now. Well they, well, they do for a while to cut the Christ out of it because he didn't know it had nothing to do with the Messiah. So they call it Christmas or the X. This mass, X mass. They know it has nothing to do with the Messiah. They know this. But the, but the Negro in the gross darkness, uh, whatever, I'm getting gifts. I don't care what it's called. 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are well, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Our nation, Israel. Go ahead. And holy nation, uh-huh. a peculiar people, uh-huh. that That's- ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. Out of that gross darkness. Go ahead. Into his marvelous light. Arise and shine. Go ahead. Which in time past were not a people. We're in gross darkness. Go ahead. But are now the people of God. Now in the light. Go ahead. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Which were in darkness, but are now in his marvelous light. Go ahead. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. That be your Christmas gifts as well, as well as fornicating and so forth. Go ahead. Which war against the soul. Go ahead, watch this. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. While being scattered among Gentiles. Go ahead. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers. Whereas your people amongst them speak against you as evildoers. Go ahead. They may by your good works. By your example. Which they shall behold. Glorify God in the day of visitation. They themselves may repent based upon your example. Oh, see, why you don't celebrate Christmas? This is why I don't celebrate Christmas. So and so. Wow, that's in the Bible? Well, what about Thanksgiving? I don't celebrate that. Wow. Um, no, I don't celebrate that. Why? I'm going to show you. Why that's in the Bible? You start winning them over. When they see that you're serious and adamant about not celebrating these things, you stand out. You're that, you're that light. They're like, what the hell? What's that light? What's that big bright light? They're in that darkness. What's the light over there? Let me go see what that is. They go to it, close to it. What is this? This is something new. What's this light here? Those are the ones that want us. Those are the ones that are trying to wake up. Yep. If they want to stay asleep, they ain't going to come to you at all. They're no, going to run from you. They're going to make yep. a, make an excuse. Get that Bible away from me. That kind of yep. thing. Okay. Don't wake me up. I'm dreaming. They move closer into the dark. They'll go further into darkness. They'll move themselves further back. Read it again. Verse 12. Verse 12. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. That whereas they speak evil against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Right, based upon your actions. Let's get um, um, Psalm 65, verse 4. So count, so bless the Lord that he called you out of this darkness into this truth because 
We're, we're one of the very few. We're a few of millions. We're the few of, the, of millions. Our people are the sands of the sea. And he said, out of all the people, I'm going to pick you to come out of that darkness. Psalm 65, verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 65 and verse 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. And causes to approach unto thee. Out of that darkness. Go ahead. That he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Meaning the kingdom. So it says, blessed is the man whom thou choosest. So the Most High called us out of the world into his marvelous light. So it says, blessed is that man or, or brother or sister that's called out of that gross darkness into his marvelous light. And you pray the Lord keeps you in that light. And you don't fade back into that darkness. Because it's very easy to do it. It ain't hard. The temptation's out there 24-7. It does not stop. It will not stop until this place is, in, is on fire. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org